Okay, welcome everybody. It is 6.01, it is July 25th, 2019. This is a combined operations finance committee meeting of the school district, of the Upper Dublin School District. Um, and I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I want to uh, start by welcoming Mr. Andy Reckman, our new CFO. First full regular meeting. Glad to have you. Uh, a few housekeeping items before we really get started. This is uh, a joint committee meeting of the Operations and Finance Committee. Vanessa Good, who chairs the Finance Committee, has allowed me to chair this one. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah. uh, and uh, to be clear, this is a committee meeting, not a legislative meeting. Um, so uh, I know there are, is interest in uh, topics that we'll be discussing tonight, but we don't actually vote on them until Monday uh, at the legislative meeting. However, we will try to pin everyone down, at least the board members down, on a position um, so that the administration has a clear direction on what to prepare for Monday night. Uh, in order to facilitate that, we will have two community input periods tonight. Uh, we'll have one right after the presentation regarding that topic only uh, so that we can collect uh, input from the members of the community before we go uh, around the table and do a straw poll. Any questions about any of that? Okay. Uh, one more uh, thing, just because this is a joint committee meeting um, and because all of us are here except Dr. Kim, um, we're all members of, of the committee effectively tonight. Okay, so um, we're not going to, we're not going to treat members of the operations committee or members of the finance committee uh, as, as uh, having any more say and we'll move forward to the, to the legislative meeting. All right? Okay. Uh, Dr. Yanni, did you have anything to open up with? So thank you, Mr. Sirota. Over the last couple of months, we've engaged in an exercise where we've built a strategic plan with goals related to teaching and learning, to technology and innovation, finance and facilities, budget and operations, engagement. Um, and so as I would ask that as we're talking about the different parts of the project tonight, that we relate those back to how the different parts of the project um, help us achieve growth and movement towards completing or achieving the goals in our uh, comprehensive plan. Okay, thank you. Um, so tonight we're you know, the, the, almost all the topics on the agenda tonight, including the presentation, are about the Sandy Run project. It's a big moment for us because uh, we are on the cusp of making, actually finally making the decision on this topic that we've been talking about for several years now. Um, so let's let's get into it. Arif, you want to get us started with the presentation? Good evening, uh, board members, uh, members of the community. As Mark indicated, um, I want to recognize that everybody in this room has worked really hard on uh, this project and put a lot of effort in. Uh, the leadership, the board, uh, certainly the administration, some of the board members have uh, been participating in various committees on the project. And I know um, some of you in the audience have uh, spent a lot of time on this project as well. I also want to recognize the whole design team, the architects, uh, they're not here tonight, but uh, the architects and all the consultants and everybody else that worked on it. So I'm here to just give you the information. I'm not taking credit for all of it. Um, neither should I take the blame for all of it, but that's okay. That was a joke. Anyway, I think it's actually a um, really successful project bid we got and um, with the conditions that we have out there and if you see everything that's going on I am very very pleased with um, how we were able to get competitive bids and, and beat the budget but I thought it would be good just to take you back and just remind us of uh, the scope of the project um, which is you know based on a building a school for the middle school students um, a state-of-the-art 21st century school classrooms, science rooms, and everything else that's required to educate uh, the students. And so I'll just walk you through it real quick. These are some renderings 
of the project. This is uh, looking at it um, from the cafeteria angle, looking at the three-story classroom wing, looking out towards uh, Twining. Oops, I went too fast, sorry. So this is kind of like the overall rendering, uh, you can see, of the entire project when it's complete. Uh, the three-story building in the front with the common spaces in the back and then the fields um, surrounding it with the major parking to the left. Again, a view from uh, Twining of the three-story classroom wing. So you can see um, all of the windows and, and the layout of the building. This is a view as you come up to the entrance and the drop-off zone. And then I just thought here's an overall color site plan again just to orient ourselves as we talk about the project. Um, some of the fields will be discussed perhaps, so I just wanted to label them for you. Multipurpose field one is the one on the left, and then two is the one next to the cafeteria, and three the one down below closer to the entrance. So the floor plan, again, just to remind you, we have a very, very uh, efficient floor plan. The, the first floor, as we're calling it, or the main floor, is got pretty much all of the common spaces and the functions. So if you're on that floor, you can hit almost every spot uh, without going up and down stairs. And uh, that's the layout we have with the gymnasiums to the left, the auditorium and arts and you know music and everything in the middle cafeteria to the right of the plan as you see it and then the library and the classrooms are as you come towards the classroom wing and then the planetarium is that circular piece that you see connecting the three-story classroom just to orient you okay and then uh, this is the upper floor as we're going to call it it says second floor but we're going to just call that the upper floor which as you can see you see the high areas of the auditorium and gymnasium and auxiliary gym and then just the classroom wing itself and then the uh, lower floor as we'll call it okay so that just orients you a couple of renderings inside this would be the main walkway heading towards uh, the cafeteria with the auditorium to the left uh, the gymnasium library and here we go so as i noted um the project bids, I think, were very successful. And one of the reasons was, I think, we used as many conventional systems as possible. We opened up the project to as many different vendors as possible to allow for clear competition. And I think the timing of our project, actually, um, what I heard from contractors, is actually good based on um, the way the economy is right now. Because the full forces won't actually be working on the new construction until you know, next year. Um, in the spring because we have demo and some prep work to do to get out of the ground here. But needless to say, real quick, these are hard to read, but I did make copies for everybody. They're the big 11 by 17s. And the only reason to look at these real quick is to just show you we had a ton of alternates, and I'll explain what those are in a minute. We have a summary version of that. That'll be helpful. But essentially, we had five general construction bids that were received. So that's the point of this. Okay, so if you just follow along, I think at the end I'll take questions, but I think this will all come together um, if you just follow along real quick. Mechanical, which is HVAC, we had three, six, eight competitive bids, okay, for mechanical. And then electrical, we had six electrical bids. And then we had plumbing, which is also includes sprinkler, we had five of those. And then for environmental abatement, we had five of those. I will note on the environmental, the apparent low bidder did withdraw their bid due to an error, and so it goes to the second low bidder, who is Sargent in this case. But we can go over those details towards the end. So we had no less than five bids in each of the main prime categories, which, is, which was good. All right, now, the bid alternates. One of the things I think we were tasked to do, and I think that we've accomplished, and I think the board and the community have in front of them, um, will require some decision making. But one of the things we did was we were concerned about the budget, we wanted to give, make sure some of the scope items, we had options for them, and that we could adjust the budget, adjust the scope for some of these categories um, 
of, of work. And that's really what we accomplished with the bid alternates. That was the goal. And I think we accomplished it uh, very successfully because it gives you the opportunity to lower the cost considerably, perhaps adjust the cost up a little, and just really look at the value for what you're getting long term and make a final decision. Okay. So I'm just going to walk through some of these again. This is a separate sheet of the one 11 by 17, but with some colors on it. Okay. Trying to keep it easy. All right. So the first three alternates are probably ones that I'm going to uh, go over. I'm not going to go down all of the alternates. Uh, we can certainly go back to any one that is, uh, somebody wants to talk about. But the, I'm going to focus on the first three. The first one was to delete the auxiliary gym. Okay, not add it. Just remember. So this is to delete it. So right now in the budget that we're going to show you that we have put together the summary budget, it includes the auxiliary Okay, so this would be to delete it to the tune of about a million two, million two seventy. All right. The next one is alternate two, which is again to delete the planetarium, which is again close to uh, it's a million two oh six to delete the planetarium. So both of these you could take them both out, and that would be two point four million theoretically, just to do math. I'm not suggesting one or the other. All right. The next one was to add on that multi-purpose one that I showed you, make that an artificial turf field. We have um, three manufacturers listed for a mid-level, middle school level artificial turf field, and that is an additional cost of 465,000. Now I also want to explain, so that would be adding to the budget that we would be showing you in a minute at the end. That would be added to it. Then the next line item below it was there's been a lot of discussion about the grading of that field and associated with the grading of that it affects the retaining wall. There's a retaining wall that backs up against the neighborhood and actually this uh, sketch here, I'll just do this real quick, shows it to you pretty well just to remind you and then hopefully we don't have to go back to it but uh, right here. So that retaining wall up on the left where you see the white car up there. So that retaining wall and that field gets adjusted if we decide we're never going to need a flat field to build an artificial turf. And what happens is that wall at its highest point is about 16 feet, that wall. And if we do the regrading, which is a savings of about 300,000, I'll go back to that number in a minute that wall at its highest point lowers by about six feet. So it goes from about 16 to 10 feet, okay, at its highest point. So it also makes that adjustment to the field. But then that field is forever graded in a form that wouldn't allow you to install that, okay? So those two kind of have to be thought of together if, if they are under consideration. Is that clear? It's not, we can go back. All right, so that was one, two, and three A. Uh, we have done uh, some work here on some of the other alternates that we thought had good value. And again, just to get us a starting point, but the first one there is alternate three B, which is deduct from the base bid to change the multipurpose. So that's the one where we've lowered the field. So that's in the budget, the minus 300,000 budget you're going to see. I just want to make sure you're clear on that. And then 4A, 4B, and 4C are to add in lieu of, um, uh, what's that again? I can't read really, What's that? Siding, yeah. So those are important to know also, yeah. So all of those multi-purpose fields right now, we are accepting sod. So that's in the number. So with the first one you see 29,000, that is to add sod around the school perimeter itself, so around the driveways, all of those areas. And that's, it serves a couple of purposes. One is we thought the price was really good if you look at the per square foot price that I calculated for you. But also, what happens is the masonry around the edges, when you um, put sod down, you don't get the splatter and, and ruins all the mortar and the masonry up along the side of the building, you know, for eight months while we're trying to water the grass or so, all right? so. 
Um, so that was that one. And then 4B, 4C, and 4D are for sod on all of those multi-purpose fields that I mentioned too. Right, and baseball and softball. All those lower fields would get sod. Okay? So that's, and you can add those numbers up, but there's 35, 53, and 60,000. So there are some big sums of money, but um, those have been included to, and the benefit of that is you get the field back about a year sooner than you would if you tried to seed it and restore the field, okay? So that's the reason, because they're, the campus is gonna be without fields for three years, probably going on four. Okay, all right. So those are the alternates I wanted to show on this first page. As you see, we've got them all broken out. I wasn't gonna spend time on any of these others, but um, we can certainly go back to them, all right? The next one we were going to look at is 9C. And I kind of need to, it's really hard to read that, excuse me. So if you flip the page over to 9C, so now we're talking about the terrazzo. I know this is always a discussion point, but these are the hallways and the terrazzo in the various areas. And I think what's going to be helpful is for me to just jump ahead and just show you how we've broken these terrazzo areas out, and we'll come right back to the slide, okay? Sorry for jumping ahead, but it's hard to do otherwise. Okay, so the flooring. So the terrazzo is broken down into that blue area, which is the back hallway, and right now we have that as terrazzo included in the bid, okay? The green area is the cafeteria, and right now we have that included in the bid also for the cafeteria as terrazzo. Okay, then we go to this next slide, and the first floor, if you recall, is the main floor, the salmon color in the middle. So right now we have all that salmon, that would be terrazzo. So the main floor, essentially right now, we're including all terrazzo. The purple, which is the upper floor, and the pink, whatever you want to call it, down on the ground floor, those we have subtracted out. So those would become quartz tile. All right, right now. The other thing is the yellow are all of the stair towers. Those yellows we have put back into rubber. So those are not terrazzo either. All right, so now when I go back to the numbers real quick. All right, so basically the first one is uh, to subtract 100, that's $112,000 deduct for So that's $112,000 for the ground floor. So that was that uh, lower floor to eliminate terrazzo and provide quartz tile. And then as I noted, 9D we left alone, which is the first floor or the main floor as we're calling it. So we did not subtract that. And then 9E and 9D are terrazzo on the second floor is 9E and number 10 is the, basically the stair towers. That's 228,000 in savings. So 228,000 in savings for the stair towers, 118,000 for the upper floor uh, classroom wing, and 112,000 in savings for the lower floor classroom wing. Okay, so we've subtracted those, and essentially the main floor is still terrazzo. And that's in the uh, budget that we're gonna review in a second, okay? All right, then 18A is on the bottom of that sheet, and uh, we took an alternate for the sound system for the cafeteria, and that is a sound system to allow for the various activities to occur in there, speaking, um, for cheerleading, etc. It's interconnected to the uh, main public uh, announcement system of the building, um, and so it would cut out accordingly and be able to be used for emergency services and everything else. And that is an add of 21,800, which has been uh, put forth for consideration. And then if you flip the page over to the last page of alternates, we had also uh, included 
alternate 18B, which is for the similar sound system for the three music areas, the orchestra, the band, and the choral. Similar functions for 18B, and that's an add of 24,000. Okay, 19 I'd like to come back and talk about, but that is to add solar for the building. That solar was a function of meeting lead gold. It does provide solar electric offset to the building to the tune of about $25,000 a year, but we're going to talk about that when we make a decision with regard to lead. And I think once I go through that, you're going to realize we need to just postpone that discussion for another day, but um, I'll go through that. So that's the $525,000 ad. So that is in the budget right now on the lower part of the sheet when I showed that to you, all right? And then alternate number 20 is uh, some improved duct work that we feel is important from a um, maintenance and a longevity standpoint. There's some duct work on the roof and we want to make sure that it's as durable as possible. This is a prefabricated double wall insulated um, watertight ductwork section for $45,000. All right, and then alternate number 23 is a deduct of 120,000, and this is in the classroom wing where the load-bearing masonry walls are on the perimeter to not fur them out and install drywall, but just simply the painted masonry block walls, and I have a sketch if we need to look at that, all right? So those are the alternates I felt needed some discussion at the board level, uh, at the committee level, but certainly we can go back to any one of them. So the next thing we're going to do here is, um, I think we've hit these, yeah, all right, we're good. So we covered the flooring slides, I hit that already. This is, uh, there was an alternate for casework, but we're not, we, we've already accepted that. We feel we need that. The exterior walls, these are the exterior walls I was talking about where we took the $120,000 deduct for. This slide here. And that's really what it looks like. So instead of seeing the gypsum board wall, you'll see the masonry walls there with the cabinets and the, and the windows uh, still in place. All right, so the project budget review with that information. So that's the single sheet you have in front of you. And we're gonna do it on the slide also. All right, so the first part of the budget is we're gonna take you down to the project total without lead and ACE grant. And you're gonna see across the top, we have the general construction with the alternates I just reviewed. We have the HVAC with the alternate just 20. Electrical with the alternates I mentioned, 18A, 18B, and 19. And just remember that has the 525 less in that number, which is carried on the bottom. And I'll show you that in a minute, okay? And then uh, JBM uh, for plumbing, that's listed there with no alternates. And then asbestos abatement, we noted also. So those are those um, five contracts that would be awarded. And then the three that are listed below are the previously awarded contracts that are already underway, okay? And then the soft costs are listed. So that total is 61 million nine. The last estimate that we issued was 63.8, so it's about two million, a uh, little under two million under budget on that. The soft costs are listed there, and the major adjustments on the soft costs were um, in three main areas that I will call to your attention. One is under the approvals and permits line item. We increased that from 400 to 900. The movable fixtures and equipment line item, we increased that from 800,000 to 1.8 million. And that also includes technology and IT requirements. And then the project contingency was reduced to 2 million and we feel comfortable with that based on the fact that we've received bids, based on the scope and the unit prices we have, and that is a little bit over 3% of the construction cost. So we're comfortable with that contingency at this point. <coughs> so with those adjustments then, the total project cost, um, with those alternates as is, with our changes, would be at 75 million, 271, 364. 
Now, some of the items that are listed under soft costs are still a little bit under flux, but not significantly enough to change the budget uh, significantly. And some will go up and down, some we still don't have. We're still waiting for some utility numbers and things like that. But many of them are already determined and established. All right, so Mark, should I go into the lead real quick? Yeah. And just tell them why we're holding on that? Yeah. Okay. So under the lead one, you've seen this sheet before, and we've been carrying these costs um, all along. The big one that we discussed, and I think it actually played in our favor, was if you look at the solar panel, we had 900000 as the budget, but we actually got the bid, we did the ultimate bid, and we got that at 525000 So that made a big difference towards the lead cost. Now, um, the reason we're doing the solar is two things. One, it provides you credits for solar, but it also offsets the energy model and makes the energy model more efficient for the building, okay? So um, when you look at that together, right now we're budgeting the total of impact on lead in terms of construction costs, the premium on it is about 997,000. If you recall, we had applied for two million, which they had typically been given, but they ran out of uh, funds, and they issued 1,368. So we're about $400,000 to the good with the benefits that we gain that are also listed there. So the only issue though is there's no guarantee on getting lead gold until the project is completed. However, the design phase submission can occur now with your direction. And what we're recommending right now is we make the design phase submission. I wrote the solar alternate to allow us to withdraw it for up to nine months um, from the date of award which would be Monday. So we'd have nine months from then to say, hey, we don't like how those design phase credits have been reviewed. We don't like how we are, are, are standing right now. So we want to withdraw it and you would get a change order credit from the electrical contractor for that amount. And the other costs, there would be some expended, the architect's fee would have been expended. The lead commissioning, I think we'd be in, into that around 100 and, uh, no, about uh, 12,000, Bill? 12, about 12,000 out of the 125. Our fee, we'd be in it to about 35,000. The other ones, uh, location transportation, I don't really know. We had just put plugs in those. Those are already built into the construction cost. So those kind of like a, a contingency there because they're really already in the construction cost. Uh, for achieving those credits. The slip sheet for EPDM roof protection, we would need that 20, but again, we wouldn't need to spend that until we made a final decision. Uh, green power offsets, those we'd be buying at the end of the project. And those other three, again, are already in the um, construction cost. Um, so our recommendation is, you know, if you're still interested in lead and you still wanna you know, capitalize on the grant, you proceed with that basis, and we make a final decision about eight months from now um, on where we are with those, and we plot ahead and make the design phase submission and see how we do with the lead uh, credits, okay? So that's the lead, and that's where the 525 is not up in the EC number, but if you proceed on Monday, the EC uh, award would include the 525. We just wanted to separate it that way, okay? So. Here we go again, all right. All right, so we hit the project budget on the sheet. Everyone's up to speed with that. We're not gonna talk about this. Um, what do you want me to do, open discussion? Should I review what I have up here, Mark, on these items? The field, just let everybody know uh, what's there. Let's see if there's uh, questions from the committee to uh, that, that lead you into those slides. So sure. at this point, um, if there are questions from the committee for a brief to help inform your decision, then I won't be going around the table for the decision until later in the meeting. Um, but if you have questions about any of that presentation, any of the alternates, now's the time. Anybody? Stan? A brief, uh, in removing uh, the gypsum wall in the metal studs, is that gonna affect the R rating for the exterior walls and or soundproofing? 
No, that's a really good question. Um, so we have exterior insulation on the exterior, this uh, spray foam, that's 99% uh, of the insulating value. There is a little insulating value added by the furring and the drywall, but there's no insulation there. So you make a good point. There is a slight reduction, but it still is well in compliance. Good point. In terms of the budget, in particular with the movement of money out of the contingency, can you speak to what that dollar figure of $2 million means for the project? Is that enough? Is that equivalent to what other districts carry at this phase in a project like this? Yeah, typically we recommend around 3%. We've had very good success in not having change orders on projects. So um, this is over 3%, so it meets my um, criteria for what I think is reasonable um, at this point. And I said a lot of the variables are out right now. We've actually got in the earthwork section, scope of work, um, we are removing all of the foundations under the annex buildings included in the bid. We've got undercutting of soils in all kinds of areas already included in the bid. We spent a lot of time, as you're aware, and effort on all of this investigation. So I think from that standpoint, we're good. The other thing I was talking to Steve about was as we come out of the ground and once we get steel up, I think we can also then come back to that point, hopefully if we're still in good shape and perhaps reduce it a little further once we get out of the ground. Uh, the good news is the whole building is going to come out of the ground one shot. We're not, you know, at some point we'll be putting steel up and masonry on the whole building. But it's a good question. I mean, you can never have enough contingency. More is always better, but I think we're in a good spot. If I could just add something. The reason that I asked for some of the money to be moved from contingency to furniture and equipment, some people might look at that and say $1.8 million for furniture. It's furniture and equipment. So that includes all of the technology for the building, all of the supplies, and we will start looking at state contract uh, we've actually already started. So that number will firm up um, and we'll be able to look and see if that $1.8 million for furniture and equipment is a little too generous as well. So we'll be able to um, possibly reduce that a little bit as well. Just a clarification. Most of the uh, different alternates you discussed were ones that we were going to accept. So just to make sure I got this right, um, on 21 A and B, you were talking about those, but those are not ones you're recommending we accept. That's the shelter lockdown system. Yes, um, the, after the team looked at this, and um, they actually felt there could be some uh, concerns with this system. And uh, you know, really, this whole security thing, I'll have to defer that because everybody's got a different idea. I can speak to that briefly. Uh, I did some research over the weekend in schools. Um, I found that several schools up and down the East Coast that had a similar system. Uh, they were subject to hacking, and uh, the security system would allow for us to lock down the building with a couple of keystrokes. There have been some instances where either students inside the building or external factors have uh, been able to hack into the system and create a little bit of havoc in the school and so um, we do have a memorandum of understanding with the local police department with the office of safe schools and I feel that the other safety precautions we're taking um, are appropriate a um, couple of questions the um, grass salt um, it is my understanding that that to be successful, that needs a lot of watering. Is that included in the price for in a bid, or is that a totally separate thing? Because that would take time, money, or I mean time, personnel time, as well as a lot of water. Yes. Yeah, so what what would happen with the watering when the contractor places it? Um, there would be watering responsibilities on the contractor, but at a certain point, once we get to substantial completion, those responsibilities would turn back to the district for water. And typically that is done toward the end of the project. So I yeah. assume that means that 
presume will be responsible for ordering. Is that correct? I just I yes. just want to get a feel for that. Yeah, I mean, probably within a month of turnover, we're going to be responsible for watering. Also on and this, cutting yeah. grass and yeah, everything else. Yeah. I've learned a lot about salt recently. Okay. Um, so I have another question. Um, grow, where does the salt come from? Because I'm understanding yeah. that that makes a big difference where it comes from. Uh, depending on the soil it's going into, and if the originating soil is similar, then that yeah. would be... Con so that's a great result. question. There's requirements to test the soil that we have first, and then among, after doing the soil testing, then there'll be a decision made on what the uh, adjustments are necessary for the sod. So there'll be a whole submittal process and review process prior to ordering or bringing the sod on site. That is and, a great question. And all of that is included yeah. in the current bid. Yeah. All right, so um, a few more. Um, that wall, that retaining wall, what is the, I, I, I'm i not quite understanding why we have to go 16 versus 10, depending on the surface that goes below that. And um, can you speak to that a little bit more? You want to try to do this one? You've been working hard on it. I want to give you a chance. But essentially it has to do with the way the field is sloped. So right, if the field is flat, right, we have to make a full cut and then that wall has to be taller. But if I can slope the field, believe it or not, that whole area sloped up, then basically the wall gets shorter. But the, if we have a sloped field, is that still playable? For a grass field it is, yes. In fact, for a regular grass field, you do want to slope on it. So that's similar to what we see at Temple Ambler? Kind of. Yeah. So right. grass fields you want to slope on. These turf, artificial turf fields are essentially dead flat. There's a slight pitch to them, but they're essentially dead flat. Yeah. All right. And then um, the lead gold, um, I know we are sort of have some extra time on that. Sure. Um, can you, I mean, I, I, we've heard the explanation, but maybe the public has not yet. What is the risk involved, so to speak, of getting the grant or not? Well, the risk is really whether or not we can, you know, it's lead version four, which is a new version, so they've made everything a little bit tougher, like they do with everything. And we have a scorecard here that right now we were hovering around 65 points and to get gold you have to be at 60. Typically when you start making these submissions, um, some of the credits just don't get achieved. Um, so this is a scorecard without actually doing a lot of the work to verify and the work that has to be done and the templates that have to be filled out and submitted are pretty extensive. So that's why, you know, Typically, the ones that we've got lead gold on, if you can see, it goes from 60 to 79 points. We're usually in the 70s, you know. Um, so this site not being in a downtown is one issue, you know. So they favor downtowns very heavily with the lead points. So we lose a lot of those points. So if you see, the one benefit though is, if you see we are under energy and atmosphere, we're, we're trying to get 16 points under optimized energy performance, which is significant. So really our dollars are going towards the building envelope and the energy performance of the building. So there is a, that's a good thing. But we have to achieve all those credits. And so the um, design phase submission, that right. gives us a, a a different set of eyes on, on so, actually getting right. to this goal? So about 70% of the points would be in the design phase submission. Approximately 70 of the 65. So if we know that, let's just say, you know, that's 42, let's say 44 points, whatever the number is, about 44 of them we're submitting in design. And let's say we submit 44 of them and we get 42. Now I'm feeling better. But let's just say we submit for 44 and we end up with only 38. Now we got to be cautious. Okay. Now that's clear. And then the cost involved in doing that is that um, is that somewhere We've, on here, or is that it's, already incorporated? We're, it's the numbers I just went over with you on that list. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Good. If I could just jump in for a quick moment about the ACE grant. So when we um, went through the process and applied for the ACE grant, Typically, you receive $2 million. 
um, the meeting where the grants were going to be awarded was supposed to happen in November and then it was supposed to happen in January and it didn't happen until March. Prior to the award, we made uh, contact with a gentleman uh, named Mr. Welker and he said that our grant was approved for two, well, was recommended for approval for the $2 million. I asked the question, were there some projects that were not recommended for any uh, award? And he said, yes. And I said, if by some chance they are later recommended, does that mean the money gets divided? And he said, no, you'll either get the $2 million or you won't get anything. Well, we got $1,368,000. Uh, $1, so as your superintendent, I, 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 I'm a little worried about the ACE grant just because it's the new, ver uh, the new version. Um, and as Arif said, if we start the submittals and we don't come up with all of those points, not only do we not get the grant money, well, we would have to give the grant money back. And so we would be on the hook for the expenditures we made for things like the solar panels, for things like um, some of the other things that are in there. So I think it's prudent to wait the nine months so that we have much greater clarity than we have at this moment. But is my is it correct to say that really we do pretty much everything else, but not the solar panel? Is that yes? That's correct. So, I have one more question. So for the. Uh, Multi-purpose field one, the one that we're talking about, turf. What is it sloped right now, or is it not sloped? So I might as well go to the sketch here, right here. So this is the multi-purpose field number one. Right now, in the base bid, it is flat. Okay. If we want to, we can add sod for the. Uh, we can add turf for the four hundred and sixty. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yep, 465. For the 465,000, that would then become artificial turf. In that configuration, it's got a little bump out in the middle. I wanted you to see that. It's, it's a 390 foot by 200 with a 100 by 200 bump out for team seating. And on the two flanks of that is a small concrete uh, pad area, 49 by 20, with a walkway connecting it where we can put in a possible. Um, seating capacity of about 150 to 200, depending on the bleachers. We'd have to buy those bleachers. It's got a fence around it. So right now in the base bid, it's flat. You'd have to add 465 if you wanted to make it artificial turf. If you wanted to lower the height of the wall and not ever be able to put artificial turf, you could take a credit of 300,000. Right now, the budget I showed you has the credit of 300000 So when we do the math, if we're going to change something, we have to remember to add back in 300000 if that's what we're doing. And In other words, just to clarify that, if we, from, from the number on the budget sheet right now, if we choose turf, that's an additional 765000 Correct, yeah. And also to clarify, if we choose to leave it as it is in the base bid, it's sod, it's not grass, it's sod. I mean, it's grass, but it's... It would be the sod. The sod. That was, that's why there was no alternate. This field was going to be sod in the base bid and flat. Yeah. Arif, is it necessary for us to um, make a decision on that the sod, all the three different sod well, projects? Because I mean, you gosh, mean now if, versus later? Yeah, yeah because I mean, what if the what if you when are you going to put what if the job or the, the site is ready for the sod and it's to, in the middle of winter time? Like you're not going to put the sod down. Well, we have a schedule and he has to comply with the schedule. But the main reason we have to make an alternate, if you remember, this is a I understand what you're saying, but this is a public bid, and this guy has to go back and negotiate the contracts with his subs. He might have a site guy that gave him different prices on sod than another site guy. So if he goes and negotiates a closeout deal on a site guy, 
and then he has to come back and add size, it's going to be a different number. We can't hold on these any of these alternates. These options, the only one that I gave us a hold on was the solar. I mean, otherwise it's very difficult because people are giving them prices on bid day for now decisions, not a decision two years from now. I understand what you're saying. I mean, we could always not do it and come back to them later, but we'd be negotiating a change order. It would not necessarily be the same price. Or, or it could be cheaper. Because we could also, instead of uh, siding the whole uh, multi-purpose, you know, we could just do the infield of a, of a softball diamond sure. and do the outfield as we can make, as, We definitely can make all those adjustments. You, I mean, too many alternates already, but I hear you. Yeah. But we, you're saying we could say, okay, approve these, add alternates, and then make changes Absolutely. to save money. We could make an adjustment before he installs it and take a credit. But, you know, it's not going to be... I mean, if you look at these prices, 50 cents a square foot is what we're getting for sod. They're pretty good prices installed. And it's, that's after all the, 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 the ground is prepped, Absolutely. graded, everything like that. They gotta prep the ground, yeah. Now, if um, we said no to sod. We get grass. The grass, and that's, so there'd be no extra cost. No, you get seeding is included, yeah. You wouldn't pay any extra for seeding. The one point I'd like to make about uh, alternates and deciding to do change, o uh, change orders later, let's say something just in round numbers costs $100,000 and we decide during the project we're not going to do it. We will not get $100,000 back. We'll get pennies on the dollar back. So to the extent possible, I think we have to avoid making change orders later to cut things from the project because we're still pay a, a, a penalty. You still pay a lot for something you wind up not getting. So if you're using that argument, then it would be better. The odds are that if we say no to the sod and then add sod, we would it would be more towards our benefit. It may be more expensive, but if we if we decide to use sod and then say no, we don't get the sod. According to Dr. Yanni, we will. We'll, we'll get pennies on the dock. But I think the consideration about the sod is not only the upfront cost, it's the usability and playability and the timeline for that afterwards that I think was driving some of the discussion. So can maybe Arifa, could you speak yeah. to that? I mean, I think what the, the idea here was that you pick up approximately a year on use if we sod the fields versus seeding them. You know, from a durability standpoint, you pick up. Sometimes you could even get on them maybe in nine months. But if you see them, it's really not recommended that you get on them after the first year of being established. Now people do it, and then that's dead, and then you have to redo it again. The other advantage I like about the sod is it forces a better grading up front of the field as they roll the sod down. But the seeding, the tolerances are a little bit more vague <laughs> because you're seeding, you can't get on it, and then you get washouts, and you know, you're trying to get back on it. So I think there's some benefits. I also agree, though, with Stan, if you don't think you're going to do something, then don't do it now. That's, I think, what uh, Steve said, Mr. And Dr. Yanni, also the same thing. If you want to do it, do it, and don't change it, because that's when you get your best bang for your buck. That's why it's a competitive bid. If you look at the numbers even across the board, if you actually look at the bid tab and see why we're picking certain ones and recommending it, it's because of the number. If this number was double that, I don't think we'd be saying do sod. We just have to live with the grass. So it's ultimately your call, and that's why these options are here. But um, I think if we make a decision, we should try to stick with it. Something could happen where we need to change it. But for the most part, I think we should just go with it or not go with it. I, I just wanted to add the uh, with the sod and not doing sod. We all know the current conditions of, of the fields at Sandy Run Middle School right. very well. Anything we can do to improve those fields, especially the baseball and the softball field, I think we need to look at. If you're saying the sod would create a better situation for those fields, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's something that we need to consider. And I, my understanding is we are doing new fields. They're moved slightly from where they currently are in your new fields, uh, improving the slope, 
we're improving the slope, new batting cages, new ADA compliance, all of that, but those fields have challenges, especially the lower field. So anything we can do to improve the usage of that field, I think we, we should consider. Yeah, and I, I do want to add to that the um, effect of downpours that we seem to have a lot of lately. Um, I think the salt will hold up a little bit better than seed, um, and in that sense, we might benefit from that as well. All right, any other comments or questions for Arif? So we have the field up there, Mark. Um, is there anything else you want yeah, to see? Just look through and see if there's anything. All right, so the other information real quick. So the field, everyone got that, right? We have three products that could be uh, incorporated, and I said they were like a, a mid-level uh, grade um, artificial turf. The building? Or if how would the field, the turf field, how would it compare to what we currently have at Spark and at the high school? So I think from a normal person's perspective, I don't think you're gonna notice any difference. I mean, it's a two and a half inch a two and a quarter inch, um, you know, turf, the one we have at Sandy Run. Spark is completely different. It's got two inch, and it's got an E layer underneath. Um, I believe Cardinal Stadium is two and a half inch, no E layer. So they're all a little different. Uh, every day, every year, they're pulling out new products. This is a dual spine to one, whereas the one in Cardinal Stadium is monofilament. So you know, they're all over the place. I think if you decide to pick this, I'm happy once we get the submittal to sit down with a select group and look at specifically any details that we want to adjust and just make sure we adjust them if there's something that needs to be adjusted. But the answer is, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference walking on one field versus the other. The, the other point is the usage of the fields because there are no lights no. On Sandy Run, compared to lights at Spark, I think the usage would be would be would be low, would be less. It's possible. Yeah. Okay. So the other information I have for you for consideration is the main gym size, and the basketball court is 84 by 50 with about 780 um, bleacher capacity. The auxiliary gym also has a full size court, 84 by 50, with about 100 seating capacity. The auditorium has about 490 seats. The planetarium is a 30-foot diameter dome with 34 fixed seats and 26 movable chairs, approximately. And the site parking is about 200 and 269 with the bus loop um, for events. So just a couple of facts, I think. Well, that's what it would look like, the planetarium with or without it on the left. So you have the planetarium, and then if we took it out, it would be not there. Okay. <laughs> um, we have milestones. I wanted to remind us of those real quick. The abatement of the annex building is scheduled to start August 6th. So we're on a tight timeline, and that will be finished September 20th. Um, you know, Bob already has the building pretty much ready to be emptied completely. It's almost there. And then the next major milestone, we will begin the annex demo um, October 1st or before. So that's the timeline. And then from there it just goes on, but you've seen the rest of it. I'm not going to go through all of it, but I just want to give you kind of the critical things we need to move on. Okay? She would like the presentation. Yeah. Would it be possible to email us because we don't have a copy of that? Sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's hard for me to see. All right. Yeah, I'll give it to uh, Brooke. You can get it out somehow. It's going to be hard to email this. Probably have to put it somewhere. It's huge. You can definitely have this. I'm just saying it's. I don't think it's emailable. I don't. I don't think we need the pictures of the site. All of that. It would be these, the facts. just these fact sheet pages. Sure. We can, uh, you can print them out and get them. I'll leave you the whole thing. And you know, I'm sure we can then put it on the website for community. Good point. Yep. Sorry right. about that. We'll make sure um, 
even if we have to drop it in a Google slide, or I mean, sorry, in a Google folder, we'll make sure that we have it so it can go up on the website. All right, any other comments or questions for Arif? Okay, thank you, Arif. Um, we will move on. Uh, actually, no, so next we're going to do a community input period um, on this topic only. So on the topic of Sandy Run and the alternates, et cetera. Uh, and we will have another community input period at the end of the meeting uh, on any other topics. Um, for anyone who, before we start, Jen, anyone um, who's not familiar with this, we do have a four minute uh, time limit um, per speaker. Uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead, Jen. Jen Kuznets, Fort Washington. Um, can we just have a conversation as to why, um, it won't be long, I won't take four minutes, um, as to why we want to have the terrazzo flooring on the main floor only. I know we took it off on the upper and lower, so is it more of like a showpiece situation or what is the thought behind putting that all over the main floor? Um, and then I didn't hear much conversation about just all the glass in the building, like the library and, and you know the hallways. So There's just a lot of glass, and I'm just wondering long term, and you know even if we're talking energy efficiency and things of that nature. I noticed the Maple Glen building's like 25 years old, 20 years old, and like there's a lot of broken seals in those windows and things of that nature. So, and I know how difficult it was for us to change over all the windows at Fort Washington Elementary and how expensive that was. So when we look at this building and all the glass and that, I just feel like we're building buildings that um, are going to be too expensive for us to maintain and then we're going to be right back where we started 30, 40 years from now. Um, so that's a bit of a concern. And then just curious as to the bleacher capacity um, of 778, I'm just wondering, I thought part of the whole discussion or in the beginning about building a new building is we didn't have one place for the entire school to assemble. And so at one time, um, I just was curious how we arrived at that number. Is it just simply space? Is it, are we expecting to host really large events there as well? Is the auditorium here? What's the capacity um, for the gym? What's the seating capacity here? I guess I don't even know that. Those are just some questions. Thank you. You can come on up, Brooke is just getting ready to set the timer. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> Hi, my name is Donna Price. I'm from Maple Glen. Um, I'm a 22 year resident. My husband's lived here for over 50 years. I have two children, one going into eighth grade and one going into 11th grade. So I don't have a horse in this race when it comes to the middle school. Um, but I've been an educator for 20 years. I've been a high school official and a coach for almost 25. More importantly, I'm a middle school health and phys ed teacher. Um, I teach phys ed in a gym that can house almost 900 spectators comfortably. It has a regulation basketball court and the ability to have two regulation volleyball courts with a proper two, six foot perimeter. Um, this school district is in a neighboring district in Montgomery County. In addition, my middle school has a second gym, which is three to, uh, two to three times, or actually three to four times larger than the current auxiliary gym in Sandy Run, which I don't consider a gym whatsoever. It's a space. It's about as big as this room, if that. And it really does have its purpose for whole group instruction, but not for a health ed or a phys ed facility or a facility for athletics. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit in regards to the flexibility of instruction when it comes to gyms in a phys ed um, capacity. There are other school uses for a second gym. There are science and book fairs, performing arts practices, class instruction, robotics and science Olympiad clubs, mini-thons, overflow for presentations that could occur in the auditorium. In my school, it's used constantly throughout the day, this throughout the school day. And I'm specifically talking about school use, not even um, extracurricular use. Any more than 50 students in a gym is a challenging and a chaotic um, situation from an instructional standpoint, let alone a safety standpoint. 
in the event of a medical emergency, there are too many students and too many moving parts, no pun intended. A divider does not provide reduction of chaos nor a reduction of overall sound in the gym. When it comes to turf fields, they save money in the long run uh, in regards to maintenance and also in regards to salaries in order to cut, water, weed, so forth. Um, outdoor fall sports has, do not have access to indoor practices at Sandy Run at any time during the school year. I don't know why that is. But the current athletic schedule also violates PIA regulations and possibly Title IX. How so? The girls' volleyball season is shortened to accommodate an early start of a basketball program because of lack of, a lack of adequate space. Overall, your extracurricular activities are just as important as a school day. They provide an opportunity for activities and athletics to, for students to process respect, goal setting, so perseverance, teamwork, stress management, time management, self-esteem, <coughs> confidence, social skills, and overcoming obstacles. If for any reason you need to contact me, feel free. You can reach out, you can pick my brain. But I really feel strongly about a second gym at the, at the middle school, it's definitely needed. And it should not be something that should be, even be considered by the board. Thank you. I don't have a speech as nice as that. Ginny Vitella, questions? I have. Um, did we use Skepticon, whatever you say, Skepticon for the high school? And if yes, what were the change orders? To what, to what extent were the change orders? Can you give me a broad look at that? Um, where is the road work that we're being required to do by the township in this number? Where is the $4 million escrow the township is requiring us to have? Um, is the, the baseball and softball upgrade, we talked about field one, field two, field three, which didn't include the baseball field and softball field, so is that upgrade art that you spoke about in the base bid? And I'd love to hear a little more about the details of that. Um, and I wonder if it makes any sense to make the wall the 16-foot wall, so that it's flat, no, not flat, yes, yeah, so it's flat and 16-foot wall, and maybe not put the turf in at the moment if we we're um, worrying about keeping something off to the side. So that way, at some point, maybe we could. I know, like Cardinal Stadium, for example, we had it sort of set up, and then it happened after the build of the high school. Um, I wonder if that's something that could be phased, but if we don't put the wall in, we have no option in the future to ever make that a turf field. So I wonder if that's a, a thought or a consideration um, and I have I have a question here at 7B and C, and I think it becomes a non-issue based on what you guys decided to add or subtract. Oh, I guess the roofing, and you didn't change it. I just was curious about, we're adding to get 20-year warranty, and we're adding to get a 30-year warranty. What comes with it? Because um, that makes me nervous that a 20 wouldn't be part of our uh, roofing style. And then... I guess my question becomes not issue because you seem to be keeping the auxiliary gym and the planet train. I wondered if that roof included, if that deduct or that add included the roof if we <laughs> added or subtracted the planetarium or the gym, right? Because if you subtract them, you subtract roof, right? Or add them, do you add roof? I don't know. Um, it made sense when I wrote it down or typed it rather. And I, Arif, I don't know if it's you or me, but my numbers don't match yours. So one of us has a wrong formula in our cell spreadsheet. So <laughs> I'll go back and look my numbers and check them a couple times. We might, they're not off a ton. Different bids were off different amounts. So I couldn't back into them. But um, let's all recheck our numbers. Thanks. Good evening. My name is Brian Pollack. I'm uh, president of the Upper Island Soccer Club. Brian, you can tilt that mic up. <laughs> Is that better? Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh, Brian Pollock, president of the Upper Dublin Soccer Club, 26 year resident of Upper Dublin. I'm here this evening representing the soccer club and wanted to highlight the need to support an artificial turf field as part of the new Sandy Run Middle School Complex. The soccer club's primary purpose is to serve the Upper Dublin community by providing an environment where youth soccer players can learn the game, develop skills, 
build on the concept of being part of a team and make lasting friendships with teammates, all at different levels of competition for ages as young as pre-K all the way through the end of high school. We have over 1,400 youth players participating in the program and countless volunteers supporting the different programs within our club. Overall, we probably touch about over 3,000 Upper Dublin residents. The community as a whole is in need of an additional all-season field given our recent history, which has seen both an increase in extremely wet and unplayable fields and the need to rest existing fields given periodic maintenance requirements. While turf fields currently are available within the township, there is a high utilization rate of those fields between the school district and other youth sports organizations. And these fields are centralized in one area of the township. Last fall, the soccer club had four weekends where we lost at least an entire day's worth of games due to field conditions. We had twice that number of weekdays, lost to practices and make up games with no viable alternative venue to move to. Having an additional field would allow all of the impacted YSOs to have an alternative on which to play games and hold practices, which ultimately will better serve each organization's participants along with the community as a whole. We strongly support and ask your support to fund the turf field as part of the Greater Sandy Run Middle School Project. The club is willing to pledge $150,000 to help your project. Thank you, and thank you for your service, Dr. Dublin. Michael Klein, Maple Glen. Uh, I'm here tonight as president of the Upper Dublin Junior Athletic Association. Uh, my main pur pur purpose for speaking tonight is uh, support and retention of the second gym at the new Sandy Run Middle School. During this two-year process, I've tried to make it clear that having a second gym is by no means a luxury. It is a dire necessity to the success of the community programs and the school programs as well. With the two gyms and wrestling room we presently have at Sandy Run, we still have been operating with a severe gym space shortage. We reluctantly had to limit team practices, turn some kids away to make the gym time we presently have work. If we had to operate with only one gym at the new Sandy Run, it would be devastating to our programs. When you look to see which facilities in the township have the greatest deficiency, it is gym time by far. Further, without the second gym at Sandy Run, we do not see another opportunity anywhere in the near future that could remedy and correct that problem. I do want to set the record straight with regard to our petition. First, I want to thank everyone that signed it for their support. It's quite amazing in less than a week we were able to get more than a thousand signatures to support the gym. However, when I read a couple of comments, I got annoyed by some of the misinformation. UDJ has never been told by either the administration or the school board that they don't support the second gym. To the contrary, the school board has been very accommodating over the last two years, listening to me explain why a second gym is so important to UDJ, the community, and the school. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm amazed that people don't run in the other direction when they see me, because I know I bet your ear over and over again saying the same thing. So I really do appreciate your patience in allowing me to explain time and time again how important the second gym is. Of course, there was no way to see where the project stood prior to the bids being opened. The petition was just UDJA being proactive, educating the public to the issue, and to show the administration and school board that the community strongly supports it. People always comment to me that no matter what time of day you walk into a gym in Upper Dublin, there are kids playing something. By my calculation, the second gym represents about 30,000 kid hours per year of use by the community alone. With that amount of usage, how could anyone think that it wasn't a great investment in the kids of Upper Dublin? Finally, it appears that the outside groups are interested in making donations if both the gym and the turf field are approved by the board. Realizing the additional expense that would entail, UDJA is a good community partner would be willing to put up $50,000 to the Sandy Run project if both projects are approved. I thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you, anybody. Anybody else? Okay, 
Okay, we'll close this community input period. Um, there were a few questions in here we can answer. Um, let's see. Um, so uh, I'll just go from the top. Um, Terrazzo on the main floor only, if you want to talk about, or Bob, maybe somebody talk about why that's the recommendation. It, we wanted to keep the terrazzo on the main floor at least because of the high traffic. Uh, terrazzo is a lifetime product for the school. It'll last uh, the length of the school. Uh, other flooring, whether it's VCT, uh, quartz tile. Quartz tile holds up well, VCT not as as well, but the, uh, we believe the money invested into the terrazzo will, over the life of the school, will pay for itself. And to be clear, so the, um, the alternate, if we don't take terrazzo, we have quartz tile. By comparison, except for those stairwells, um, in this building, the parts that are not terrazzo are VCT. So we're not looking at any VCT in in Sandy Brown Rain. Correct. And uh, the stairwells would be rubber, which is the same thing we have here? Yes. Okay. Um, so it's sort of a pay now or pay later That's consideration. Okay. Uh, there's a question about glass in the building. <coughs> Frankly, we're too late to talk about that. Um, but uh, does anyone have anything? Is there anything to say on that point? Um, bleacher capacity in the main gym, I think we, that number is calculated based on a standard that we had to use for plan count purposes of 18 inches per seat. 18 inches. Yeah. And there was discussion about you know having some of the seats on the floor to right. for an event, because there's um, a whole gym floor. But realistically, um, many schools find 16 inches per, per butt in real life is um, is fine, um, but for plan count purposes, we have to we have to do it as eighteen inches. Can we go back to the to the window question? Yes. Um, uh, a community member mentioned that the seals are broken on windows. What obviously there's maintenance that you have to do on exterior windows. What kind of risk do we run for the glass? I mean, I know it can't be changed now, but what? What type of risk are we running with interior windows with seals and whatnot? Oh, interior windows wouldn't have a seal issue. It's more of a, a for the exterior. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also make that that there was also a comment made about the windows at Fort Washington. It's my understanding that that is a different process. It was a different construction process with whole sides of the building rather than the way we're putting in the windows in this case. Is that correct? Well, the classrooms here, we have more punched windows and stuff, but we do have curtain walls in certain sections of the building, like the cafeteria section is, you know, curtain walls, stuff like that. So, but it's a completely different window type. These are double insulated thermal paint windows that are different. They still do need maintenance eventually as Dr. Yanni said on the exterior, you know, they they get a beating with the weather. Is there anyone in the room who can tell us who the GC was for the high school? Yes, there was yeah. captain. It was captain. Yeah. Um, and so, what was the what was the extent of change orders for that? I don't and remember. And how much of that has to do with? The but I know we had the minimal end. change orders. I think the the two big change orders that I recall. Uh, on this project where one was the terrazzo that was mentioned that was added. Um, I think Vanessa, you said that. Um, the board added that afterwards when they realized, well, we, we, we had decent contingency left towards the end. And so I think that reflects the change orders weren't many. And then the other main one that we had was the basin uh, down behind the township building where we hit the um, garbage fill. That was the only Big one. Big one. That was the only change order other than the board coming up and suggesting that we revisit and look at some additional terrazzo. Yeah. And across the street that was that was about a half a million dollars. Right. And of course that, that had nothing to do with the GC. Right, and nothing to do with Skeptic. Yeah. I mean the bottom line with the change orders is what we've said from the start is you know having good bid documents because um, and I think here we've, we've done as good a job as we possibly could. I think that's going to be the key, more than it is the contractor. Uh, where in the budget is road work and escrow? Yeah. Those are 
listed under the uh, first tab under the five primes there? The HOP yes. is, is the road work for 618? Yes. 584. Yep, those are the road work. Um, it says HOP contract and then the switch gear and the modulars there, like lightly shaded there. Yeah, they are. They're on the single sheet because they're already awarded. Those were awarded previously. And, and I think there was a side yeah. question. Well, there's an, before we get there, there was an escrow. Where's the escrow in the budget? The escrow's not in the budget. That's, uh, I guess, Sandy's going to look at how you know, some of the borrowing will be maybe deposited. I don't think it's, uh, we're not paying that out. It's going to be how they hold it. The, the escrow is not an expense. Right. It, it's in the township's account holding for us to finish site work and then we'll submit for reimbursement. So eventually that will all come back to us. It's in the budget already. It's and pulls Andy, up into the budget. Sorry, Ed. Can you uh, speak to the changes that were made related to the escrow account over the last month that it's going into a, an interest bearing account now? Sure, yeah, we, we worked with the township and the four plus million dollars will be in an interest bearing account, uh, which is a good thing, uh, 2%, that's $80,000 a year, so that's substantial. And then the other piece of that, the permits, uh, we were able to have that at $500,000 and then it will be replenished as needed. So I think that was a win for us. Uh, there was a question about um, baseball, whether the baseball and softball fields were included in the field discussion. We may not have been explicit about it, but we're talking about treating them all the same. So there's four D. Uh, yes, but it is uh, right. I have four D, which is green. We're going to take that alternate and make it turf. Uh, make it sod. Excuse me. Four D is uh, the baseball field. But my understanding too, those both fields would be uh, significantly redone. They'd be resloped to help some of the drainage and also new backstops, new benches, uh, new uh, ADA compliant fields. So there will, there will be a significant amount of work done on both of those fields. Yeah, not significant reslope because parts of, or at least not the parts that are in the floodplain, but because we can't do that, but we can smooth them out, right? Um, there's a question about uh, field one sticking with the base bid. So the base, so we basically have three options for that upper left field, unlike the others. The others are grass or sod. For the upper left field, we have three options, which is sloped sod, flat sod, or uh, flat turf. Um, so to be clear, that one we are we do have three op three options to discuss when we get there later. Uh, the roof. The question about is the pricing of enlarged or shrunken roofs included in the numbers and the answer is yes, right Reef? Partially, partially. Partially yes, and the, the reason is I think if I understand the question is if you were to take an alternate, which we are not for the roofing, then how would the contract, and then we delete a section of building, like the planetarium, how would that impact it? And the answer is, we're not taking any of those alternates. So right now, when we lop off, if, if we decide not to do the planetarium, the roof goes away with it. It's included in the price. So you're right. She's partially right. If we were taking an alternate, there'd be 1,200 square feet of roof somewhere floating around that the alternate didn't factor in. But it's if you really look at the numbers, we'd figure something out. It's not. It's not anything major. Um, We're not picking up a turf field with that, I'm just saying. The base roof warranty is 20 years, correct? It is a 20 year EPDM single ply roof, yes. Okay. Um, uh, big uh, thank you to both UDSC Soccer Club and UDJA for those pledges that um, that is uh, certainly a factor worth considering when uh, when we do go around the room. So thank you, thank you for those. On, on and we have to acknowledge very short notice. So appreciate that. Um, were there other questions? Did anyone have uh, other other comments or questions on community input? Right. Go ahead. I, I have one additional comment, and uh, this has to do with the turf field and donations. 
Uh, this is based on the history of new playing fields, both at the high school and at Spark. The precedent has been set on a coordinated effort among the district, township, soccer club, and UDJAA. Uh, the township contributed 100000 to the high school turf project. Uh, it would not be unreasonable to conclude that the township would be interested in a similar relationship at Sandy Run for the turf field. All right, any other comments or questions on the community? I was uh, a township commissioner when we approved $100,000 towards Cardinal Stadium, and from, from what I remember, it was a unanimous uh, decision with the commissioners. I just wanted to thank Mrs. Price for her perspective on the oxygen. Okay, so let's get into the regular business part of the committee meeting. Um, my agenda has disappeared. Okay, here we go. Um, Mr. Luckman, are there any announcements? There are no announcements. Thank you. Uh, we do have minutes from the June 20th Operations Committee and Finance Committee meeting, so if the members of those committees have any uh, comments on those, please get them to Brooke before Monday. Um, so jumping into the finance reports and recommendations, uh, Bob, change order number two with FTD construction. Yes, we have a change order MTD construction, the windows at Fort Washington. Uh, most of these change orders are based on um, field conditions uh, that we were uncovering as we were working or just items we weren't happy with that uh, uh, we wanted to change. Uh, it's a total of $27,000. $400 and they included uh, inside the classrooms there was a wood uh, panel it was actually made of plywood uh, that mates to the top of the window frames that's what the shades uh, were attached to in the rooms when the windows were taken out the shades removed uh, the condition of the wood is not great uh, it's not terrible it's not rotted away it's just delaminating plywood uh, one change order would be to cover all that wood with uh, brake metal just have it wrapped in metal uh, for a better finish, uh, it would actually make a better seal to the, the windows to the interior of the building as well. Uh, another uh, was we removed the doors to the classrooms to the outside playgrounds. I just wasn't happy with the condition of the mullions when the doors were removed. We had holes from the bolts, uh, holes from the latches, uh, and we asked for another more brake metal to be wrapped around the mullions that had the holes in them. Uh, so that was a second change order. Uh, one, the metal panel colors, uh, you see the alternating colors. Uh, when we started to field install, we weren't happy with the pattern around the vents. Uh, it, it just did not look right. Uh, so we need to change, uh, the panels are already in hand, but we need to change uh, some of the panels around to, to make it a better matching pattern. Uh, that was an additional cost. And then during bid documents, we um, deleted an exterior door from the library. Uh, we, rethought that and that door needs to go back on. It's a door from the library to the, the courtyard uh, outside. Uh, so that was the remaining item on this uh, change order. All right, comments or questions? All right. I have a quick question. Uh, the windows are being done over two years. That's correct. Right, so th this additional cost, is it for year one or is it for both years? Originally it was going to be for year two. Uh, well, <laughs> Year one for majority cost, the door would have been year two, uh, but they're moving enough speed and material is in hand, so we believe we're going to get the library completed uh, this first summer. The other adjustments that are being made, will that then result in a small increase next year? Next year you wouldn't see the increase. This will take care of, okay. this. Uh, the brake metal is taking care of all the rooms, the panels okay. are taking care of the remainder of the building. So we purchased this year and we don't have to have any expense next year. Thank you. Any other comments, Stan? Are you saying, you know, according to here, does it say ten thousand dollars for an exterior door for the library? Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, we questioned it. We actually got the number down. We were not happy with the question or uh, with the price that was originally quoted. We did go back. Uh, a lot of it's the door hardware that's required. And you're talking fifteen hundred dollars just for the padding bar set and door latches. Uh, but this is also not the entire door. 
Uh, the door is not as wide as uh, the space between the mullions, so this is the additional window panel that goes with it. It's an entire set, uh, one bay of the window. All right, so you're saying $10,000 for the door, and but the, the frame should be already included because it comes with the panel with the window and everything, right? Uh, no, it's changed completely with the door. Uh, the, the way it was, the, the window frame would have gone between the two vertical mullions that are still in place that don't get changed as part of the job. The door is not as wide as the space between the mullions, so there will be some additional paneling reconfiguration that was required. All right, well, so what happened to the frame that was supposed to go there? We'll have, it as a, we'll have a spare window in stock. We'll have the fr spare frame and spare window. Any other comments or questions? All right, so we'll move that forward to the legislative meeting um, on Monday. Next up is the big one. So um, bids and alternates for the Sandy Run project. Um, and uh, you want to you want to you want to have more time to think about that? Well, it should be. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Dr. Yanni. <laughs> the comment you made at the very beginning about the strategic action plans and consistency, could you speak to those three alternates with regard to how you interpret them in, in with the strategic action plans? And sure. Uh, <laughs> My point in bringing up the strategic action plans, and I'm going to bring them up at every single public meeting that we have, because I think if we don't always attach um, rationale to things we're doing, and if it doesn't go back to your strategic plan, we don't even have a shot of hitting our goals. So let's talk about uh, the alternates. And I'm going to be deliberately ambiguous, because I'm not going to be the first one to say what I think, um, because I don't want to cloud the, uh, the, board's, the board's judgment. Let me say this. I understand the economy that we're in, but I also understand that when I came to the district, we were talking about a $70 million project. Um, I, am, I am supportive of going above 70 million, but I wanna make it very clear um, that every dollar that goes to debt service is a dollar out of the instructional program um, and doing things for kids academically and moving the district forward. Let's start with uh, the auxiliary gym. I'll go in alphabetical order so I don't show uh, any favoritism. Um, the auxiliary gym, with the way our middle school schedule is currently um, currently developed, um, if, uh, based upon the information that I have from the middle school, we would have a hard time um, having uh, the number of phys ed classes and the frequency that they um, run throughout the day if we didn't have the aux gym. We would also have some safety issues. We know uh, that the aux gym can be used for more purposes than just the um, just phys ed classes. Um, so I, I think looking at all that information and looking at safety um, is really important. One of the things that we don't offer uh, a lot of is adaptive physical education for our students with mobility challenges. Having that extra space allows, uh, a lot, will allow us to expand uh, adaptive uh, phys ed. The field, um, I think what the board needs to wrestle with or to understand is um, my, my consternation about the field or my previous consternation about the field um, is we're uh, on a piece of the property that we're not going to be able to light. We have neighbors right behind there. I don't think we would ever get approval from the township to light it. That said, um, we know that we do have, or we're told that we have a shortage of, uh, of fields. So I think the board needs to weigh the pros and cons, um, not only of uh, you know usage by the school, but also usage by the community. The planetarium. Um, this may be um, a, uh, an unpopular statement, and I'm gonna I'm gonna preface everything by by saying this: I don't think that 
Um, our planetarium is useless, but I think our science curriculum has been developed around the planetarium. If the board so decides to include the planetarium in the new project, we will make use of that. If the board decides that that is not uh, a prudent expenditure and we take that as a deduct, science will go into review next year. Um, Earth and space science is important. Earth and space science is one strand of science. So I think those are the types of things that you have to that you have to weigh. Uh, we're building a facility that is. Um, we need it to last 50 years, right? So I think when we look at all of the structures in the project, we have to make the best decisions not only for tonight and Monday night and for groundbreaking and building dedication, but the best decision for really the foreseeable future of Upper Dublin. And I'll close by saying this. You know, as a, you know, as a superintendent, I got into education because I wanted to help kids. And when you boil down all of my priorities, Here's what I want. I want every kid in Upper Dublin to get exactly what they need, whether that means enrichment, whether that means remediation, whether that's robust extracurriculars, co-curriculars, all of those things. In my job, though, I have to always play this, this push and pull. Um, game's not the right word, but there's this push and pull relationship. I want kids to have everything that they deserve, but I also realize that we need to balance it with the community. And we're in a community that we're often reminded that our taxes are high and that every year uh, we increase taxes. So I think as we think about the totality of the project, we have to weigh a couple of things. Is it good for kids? Is it good for the district? Is it good for taxpayers? Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take Art's suggestion. Let's let's move through these other quicker ones, uh, and then we'll come back to the tough one. Um, so item C, uh, testing and inspection services, construction and waste management. Uh, Ari, who is who can take that one? Ari. So these are all listed under the soft cost section of our budget. Um, I think they're pretty perfunctory and necessary. I can go through whatever details you want, but we got the proposals. We have a recommendation for each one. They're based on unit costs for the testing, um, construction testing. So they're going to be paid as needed. Um, and also for the waste management, they're going to be paid as needed based on what we would divert from uh, the landfills. Uh, the testing adjusting balancing is a lump sum and we did get two proposals for that. They're on the list there under soft costs in the budget. Okay? Comments or questions? Oh, the next one um, is, I do the plan con? Yeah, why well, you interrupt there, go ahead. And take yeah, plan con part F, attachment C, it should say actually, because we did approve F before, so it is just attachment C. And all that is, is again, just telling them that we got bids, they're reasonable, and we're moving ahead. Um, and then part G, we will fill out and get to, that's again a measuring of Act 34, but if part G is based on bids. But if you tell us the alternates today, because all the pages change with every number that changes. So <laughs> it needs the numbers to, to fill it out, but it's basically a tabulation of the bids. Um, and based on the alternates that uh, you might direct us on, hopefully, today. If not, you're going to have to approve the Part G Monday without it being filled out or, you know, allowing us to modify it or something. So we'll have to talk about that. With Andy. Yeah, so a couple couple of reminders in there. It's a good reminder of why it is we need to try to come to a decision tonight. This, you know, the paperwork becomes very complicated and we have only until Monday to prepare it. Uh, also a reminder that um, while we acknowledge that Plan Con is on moratorium for now, we made a commitment early on to uh, go through the, the process all the way through in case something changes midway through. Yeah, so this uh, document, we might actually be bringing it to you Monday because we're going to have to get it and then there's financing that goes in it. It might actually, the you know, with all due respect to Part G, we might have to just ask you to approve it based on the bids and having 
administration review the numbers because the chances of getting all of those pages filled by Monday is probably not very realistic, but it's just a tabulation of the bids. Right. Eric, you had a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to comment that uh, in the governor's budget, they did pass a new uh, law regarding plan con, uh, de de describing how they, uh, it was based on the uh, committee's recommendation of plan con. Uh, however, they did not assign any funds to to the to the projects. Uh, and currently, we are assuming that there's no reimbursement for plan con. So we've worked, we've built a budget with no reimbursement. If and we've submitted all the paperwork in case they suddenly say anything that's in the stages of plan con, we'll we'll take a look at it. But uh, nothing's in the budget right now. We received some money for the high school, not much, but. You know, every million dollars, as we all know, would be significant. So we, I really appreciate that we're continuing the process, and maybe there'll be some additional movement with, uh, with plan con. Any other comments or questions on those two items? Okay. Andy? Okay. So we'll uh, we'll move those up to the legislative meeting. Uh, item E is. Um, executing the next uh, step in the contract with the architects, right? That's correct, yeah. My, my understanding is you approved the contract obviously with Breslin, but then there's been some formal approval at the committee and board level to move through the phases of the contract. So this would be to formally approve the last three phases of the contract. Comments or questions? Okay, so we'll move that one forward to the legislative. And I'm thinking, Bob, ratification uh, for the Invoice from Crown Castle? Yes, Crown Castle is a company that provides us the fiber that links all of our schools together. Uh, it's a, we're just leasing the fiber off them. We need to do relocations. This is actually uh, two separate projects uh, into the one quote. Uh, we had to give them the, the authority to move ahead of this. Uh, the first part is to move their fiber from the poles on Twining Road uh, that are being relocated. So as part of the telephone pole utility relocation, there is a fee from Crown Castle to move their fiber on those poles. But it is also pulling the existing fiber from San Juan Middle School uh, to Lime Kiln Pike. It's a new route that needs to be taken because uh, the current route that the cables take are right through the fields where we need to dig the foundation for the new building. Uh, so we need to temporarily refeed the middle school to keep it online for the next three years. So this is uh, a combination of the utility poles on the Twining Road that need to be moved and relocating the fiber from the middle school to Lime Kiln Pike. Is that relocation temporary or that would be the, the new route going forward? The route on Lime Kiln Pike will be the permanent location. Uh, we'll have conduits from the poles that are on Lime Kiln Pike going into the new building. So they will have to uh, move the fibers into the new building. Right. Other comments or questions on this item? Okay, so I'll move that one forward to the legislative meeting as well. Uh, we have two items on uh, purchasing vans and selling old vans. I'll take those. Uh, Mr. Robbins couldn't be here tonight, so he asked me to uh, review these two items. So what he's looking to do um, is purchase three new vans. Um, my understanding is he presented this to the Finance Committee at the May 16th meeting uh, as part of the budget for 1920. So these are already included in the budget, in the transportation budget just because of the size of the purchase. Um, they're about $30,000 a vehicle, a uh, total of $90,000 we'd be looking for board approval. Uh, so this is listed as coming out of the general fund. We, we purchase buses. We normally purchase them out of capital. Um, is, is there a reason this is general and not capital? I think just because it was approved as part of the, the general fund this okay. year. So I don't know that there's any specific reason. All right, other comments or questions? Okay, so we'll move those forward to the legislative meeting. I'm sorry, Mr. Sarga, I, yes. I thought I covered just the first piece of that. There's also oh, a sorry. sale yes. of two vans that I want to cover as well and make sure I touch on. So with, with the purchase of those three new vehicles, um, two of them are actually going to be to replace old vehicles. Um, so what Mr. Robbins is looking to do is use Municipid, which is an auction style, um, uh, kind of like an eBay, but it's for municipal. Uh, 
organizations to use. Uh, it's worked really well. We used it at New Hope. I know um, Bob's been using it here, um, and it's worked really well. So not only will we, um, we won't just dispose of them, we'll actually generate some revenue off of the sale of those items. Um, the other van, he will keep, the other older van he'll keep, and we'll look to bring one of our runs back from the, the MCIU. Great. Yeah, I look forward to hearing more good news from the municipal Stan. Andrew, does, um, when the sale of these two vans, does the proceeds go into the general fund, or does that go into the transportation fund, or how, where does that money go? Transportation is all in the general fund, so that'll come, when we sell fixed assets, that will come in as revenue into the, the general fund. Anyone else? Okay, so I'll move that forward as well. Let's come back to the tough one. So what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to go around the room here and ask everyone to uh, to state a position on at least the big alternates in front of us. Um, and if in your mind that is tied to you know something else, if it's tied to turf or terrazzo or whatever else, then, then say so. But I'm hoping we can keep this reasonably narrow so we're not here all night um, talking in circles. Again, the goal is to try to come out of here with a recommendation on which alternates we're going to take. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, since this is a joint finance, the operations meeting. I haven't heard too much about the finance yet. Um, I know there were some updates from PFM, and I was wondering if um, our CFO can speak to the cost of borrowing for the project as an update. I'll start, and then I'll let Andy um, jump in. So when PFM originally came in, uh, met with the board, actually before my time um, in Upper Dublin, um, all of the numbers that they were using were assumptions. Um, at that time, there were supposed to be three uh, borrowings. Uh, a bank qualified borrowing, uh, less than a 10 million, a big borrowing in the middle, and then a final uh, borrowing. Um, all of the uh, debt service schedule showed about a $2 million increase in debt service. Uh, PFM, when they project their model out, they use very conservative figures. Because we have a reasonably good bond rating, um, our numbers are actuals for the bank qualified. The actual, we've done two bank qualified uh, BQ uh, borrowings, and both have come in better than, better than expected. So it looks like we will do one large draw and then another uh, BQ at the end. But all of the models since uh, the, the original projection at 69,885 uh, showed about a $2 million gap or a $2 million jump in debt service. I don't know that there's a, a ton to add. Again, at this point, we've only borrowed $20 million of a, a potentially set up to $75 million borrowing. So um, I do know the first two borrowings were advantageous uh, as compared to what, uh, as Dr. Yanni mentioned, to what PFM had. Um, forecasted. So uh, they typically use a conservative model, so their interest rates, when we go to borrowing, interest rates are typically better than what they have projected. So um, anything that we borrow beyond the, the 70 million, which was their original, the, what the original financing model was built on in 2017, the way they built it is a, a wrap model. So what they'll do is um, any additional monies we sort of add on beyond 70 million get wrapped on to the end of the, of the borrowing so more money kind of gets pushed out to the end of the project to, to level the debt service payments out over over time a bit so um, typically for you know every million dollars extra you're borrowing you're paying a million plus a little bit in interest and that's moving out towards the end of the project so um, I don't know that the models have changed significantly since what you've seen um, except for that it was three tranches of borrowing, now it looks like it's going to be going to be four. So, One of the things I'll just add, our credit rating, our Moody's rating, uh, really depends upon how advantageous uh, going into the market is going to be. So we have a AAA three uh, rating right now. One of the factors that Moody's looks at is uh, not only your ability to pay the debt, but they look at um, how much money you have in reserves. 
And so we were questioned a couple months ago about the, the amount of money that we have in reserve, especially for some tax appeals and tax reassessments. Um, for or to ensure that we have as advantageous as possible uh, results moving forward, we're going to need to make sure that not only our uncommitted fund balance uh, remains at a good place, but also that our committed fund balances uh, remain uh, at comfortable levels. One thing I can add, uh, based on the, the latest forecast, um, compared to the original 2017 model, we can borrow approximately a little over 72 million for the same price as the original forecast of 70 million based on the actuals from the first two borrowings and forecasts going forward. But of course, like Andy says, we've only borrowed 20 million so far, so you know, it's hard to, hard to pin anything on that. All right, so any other comments or questions before we, before we go? Um, Ticha, let's start with you, you're down the end. Sure. Um, so when the, the, instead of going uh, item by item, we're just going to go person by person. So if you want to bundle your comments uh, on all of the relevant things, please do that. All right. Um, Dr. Yanni didn't want to be the first one. I'm the lucky one, I guess. Um, so here I'll go. Um, the Ox Gym, I totally echo Mrs. Price's comments, um, having seen um, schools in action. Um, and I, I think the piece of the auxiliary gym, not just during a school day, um, but also outside for the community is important, especially at the middle school level where a lot of kids sort of are trying to figure out do they want to stick with um, sports or not. The township offers a lot of opportunity for kids who may not make it into a varsity or JV team to really continue and continue all the way through 12th grade. And I think that's one of the big strengths of this com uh, community. So I absolutely want to support that Ox Gym. Um, the planetarium, I am a scientist um, and it pains me to, watch it, to say this, but I would see that the planetarium would be a cost for a building that I think we can largely support by um, Chromebooks and other applications. Many of you are using your cell phones to look at the sky. Um, what I would like to see is an active use rather than um, maybe what I perceive the planetarium to be a little bit more of a passive use. Um, that um, I see students go out with their laptops, look at the sky and then discuss it the next day when they come back. Um, this is a tough one. But I think we need to move forward uh, 50 years ahead. Look 50 years ahead. Um, the Apollo 11 stuff that we saw recently was incredibly exciting, and that sense of wonder and excitement. I think we can still give our students, with the technology we have, with the sort of different ways of uh, teaching and learning. Um, so if um, that's where I would like to reserve that kind of money in the budget for instructional purposes and going to kids and the turf field um, I do think we should go for that a um, number of years when Maple Glen was being built um, there was a big discussion about a small gym versus a large gym I think the community has not regretted going for that large gym uh, um, and I see the turf field a similar uh, role having that not just for um, students uh, during student sports. Um, I certainly remember the days of field hockey where um, that was not really possible um, on the grass field anyway, so that turf would be there for soccer for other groups. And in terms of the lights, I do feel that during the school day we still have enough light and other option and other use during the weekend still doesn't require the light, so I think the lights could be optional. Um, I don't see that so much as a problem. Um, and I think I've, oh, and the other piece, I think this gives us an opportunity to work with our partners in the township, and if there's anybody who wants to do some naming or something, we have that opportunity here. Um, so much for my... All right, thank you for being brief. Sarah? Thanks, I asked to go next because I'm going to try to lobby some of my fellow board members. Um, so for the auxiliary gym, I don't think it's really a question. I think it completely makes sense to go for the auxiliary gym. When we talk about the use that our kids are going to be able to have every day, um, I think Dr. Yanni spoke about it and the fact that um, 
you know, good, good things for the community in addition to our kids. So that's, that's easy. Um, for me, the planetarium, so I, I guess I, I've always um, been pro-planetarium, um, and I've been pro-planetarium for about three years. Um, so when Dr. Yanni talked about how all the decisions that we need to make um, talk about or, or look in relation to our strategic plan, um, so I'm looking at the strategic plan, and um, one of the focus areas is engagement. And so I think three years ago, the board, at least the board at that time, um, did have engagement with our community. And the community spoke that the planetarium is important. I mean, the planetarium is different, right? Most school districts don't have planetariums. Um, and it's one of the things that makes uh, Upper Dublin special, uh, unique. We have Robbins Park, we have the planetarium. And I feel that the community, when we look at goal two of this focus area, says the district shall um, strengthen connections with the stakeholders by emphasizing belonging, trust, and transparency. And I feel at least that um, I gave, as a board member, assurances that I would support a planetarium three years ago. And so in order to continue that trust and that transparency, you know, I believe that voting for the planetarium, including it in the project, meets that goal um, of our strategic plan. Um, in addition to the planetarium, I, I think that uh, the, if we don't get the planetarium now, we'll never have it. Like, it's never coming back. It's not the ox gym that we could build on later. It's not a field that we could do later. It is, um, it, it was gone if we don't do it now. And I also look at the planetarium as a multi-purpose room. It's a room off of the classroom wing that could be used for collaboration. And that's a big thing that we do, um, at least these days, is we talk about having uh, spaces to collaborate in. So uh, I know the dome in and of itself is a little bit more expensive, but I think that having a multi-purpose room at least um, gives us an additional space. So uh, for those reasons, obviously, I, I'm supporting the planetarium, and um, I, would want, I would like my fellow board members to consider that as well. Um, and lastly, the field. So coming into this meeting tonight, um, I was very hesitant about having the turf field. And I still am hesitant because I don't believe we can ever do lighting. I don't think we should ever apply for permits to get lighting because of the location of that field and the impact it would have on uh, the near neighbors. So I also recognize that we have a shortage of fields for the community. And hearing tonight that we have um, $200,000 pledged um, from our community partners and potentially more from the township, I think that's something that I'm open to consider. So um, what I would like to know um, before Monday night's meeting is sort of the time factor that's that the fields are utilized. So because we can't have lighting on that field, um, what, what would the usage be? Because we know that you know, the sun sets and you know, about 6.30 in the evening, mid-October, um, the fields aren't really utilized as much um, because we don't have lighting. So, um, and I would like to be able to uh, get information again before Monday night's meeting um, from the soccer club um, and potentially any of the other um, organizations that would use that field uh, about um, when have we been able to utilize the turf fields that we currently have when we haven't been able to, to use the grass fields. Um, I think you talked about it a little bit, but if I could get some of that uh, information to really understand what the impact that would be on um, our community members, on our, on our kids. So I think it's a lot of money to spend because I know while we have initially, you know, two hundred thousand dollars from the community that are from these groups, that's wonderful. But there is maintenance. Um, we know that we have to do the field over again, you know, and, it, and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars that we would have to spend um, in a decade. So I'm not saying that I'm necessarily against it, but it needs. I need to get, I guess, more information from um, our potential partners uh, about how it necessarily would be used um, and how it really would benefit our community. So I guess I'm gonna put that as a question mark for you. <laughs> so I'll get more information, but, but I mean, having and, and also, if the township could commit to more money before Monday, that would be really great because that's a huge factor. If they're gonna give us $100,000 for the field, great. I kind of feel like I don't wanna say, hey, we're totally for it, and then they're like, okay, well, they don't have to give you any money then. So I think as a negotiating tool, at least, I'm not, I'm reserving judgment on what the township is willing to commit. Um, I, want, I, I sort of had an order in mind, but does anyone else want to go? Uh, okay, Amy? Okay. Um, this was an unusual situation, I think. I don't want to speak for Stan and Tizi and myself coming into the board when this project was sort of uh, very far along. Um, so I've really tried to 
use the following thought process um, in making my decision. First off, um, my belief system is that we need to maintain excellence in academic and extracurricular offerings. And to me, the most significant way to do that is investing in our teachers and our staff. Because when I speak to my own students, and I see it on a day-to-day -day basis in my work, that's where the wonder, joy, and enthusiasm for education is. So my decisions are really rooted in that. And also, my concerns about financial risk and exposure, not just for this project, but for the three aging elementary buildings that were a critical point of discussion when the original Sandy Run Planning Committee was getting together saying this is where we need to be mindful. So those two pieces are driving you know, my decision making tonight. So the auxiliary gym I'm fully in favor of um, and I do uh, appreciate your comments Dr. Yanni about adaptive physical education. If you've never seen that programming offered I actually attend many of those sessions in the building where I work. Um, it is a vital uh, piece of instruction for our special education students and additionally the flexibility of having that space and we know our students in general are a bit more sedentary than we would like so having that ability to get up get moving um, I think it's I think it's critical um, on the turf field I am I'm torn uh, I work in a neighboring district where they are currently trying to retrofit fields because they have no playable turf fields at all and there's going to be millions of dollars to outlay to do that. On the other hand, and I, I really have to say, I truly appreciate Mr. Pollock and Mr. Klein coming forward tonight as partners. I think that is a really, really special thing about Upper Dublin, and I'm grateful for that. Um, it's somewhat disappointing to me that knowing this project as intimately as the township does, considering they are aware of the processes and the timelines and how this project has been going, that they weren't able to have this discussion months ago about financially potentially supporting us. And perhaps there was something we could have done on our end to stir that conversation. But one thing they do know is that they are charging us a very large number for permits and fees. And they could have changed that. And they could have reduced that in an effort to make this project more affordable. So for that reason, unfortunately tonight, I am a no for the turf field. The third piece is the planetarium. I am a lover of science. I truly appreciate that for many people, and I respect so many people for coming forward and speaking to their desire to have this facility. On the other hand, I again reflect on the fact that what to me brings wonder and joy to students and what we heard very clearly at our last education committee meeting in May was about students participating in project-based learning and that they had the tools and the classroom experience that caused them to engage in a different way with the material. There are other avenues of science, things like robotics, artificial intelligence, rocketry, drones, pre-engineering, we have never even talked about. Um, as part of what we could potentially offer but we would have to train staff we would have to educate staff in order to be able to do that and i'm not saying we're going to do those things but i'd like the flexibility to be able to do that so for me the planetarium is a no stand you look like you're volunteering yeah my comments are basically mirror teachers um out before the auxiliary gym I'd be against the, the planetarium and I would be for the turf fields. Um, I'd like to just add um, on the, the planetarium, I had two kids go through the uh, senior run and I've been in that planetarium only one time and I was in the auxiliary or in the gyms countless of times, both with the, when they were going to school and when they were in youth programs. A uh, turf field, um, there is no turf field down this neck of the township and I think it deserves a a turf field down here. Um, again, it gives uh, the township uh, opportunity to rest fields as well as the school district when they can use the, the turf field. And in fact, um, you know, looking at the location of the turf field, I, I, I believe it only uh, residential area is only on one side of the turf field. Um, perhaps uh, we, if we can get a price for just putting 
conduit uh, for lighting in the future if we do get, you know, if it's, you know, viable. I know um, when we did Spark, we had issues with the neighbors with the with the lights there. We were able to work it out, directional lighting, making sure it was on timers and so on. So um, I would be, you know, discount lighting it at night. Um, so you, you would get more use out of that field. All right. Uh, Joan, have a comment So, um, I, you know, I, I look at this as pluses and minuses. This is these, some of these are hard decisions for some of the reasons people have already stated. You know, I don't don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. And on the other hand, you can commit to something that later on you're sorry about because you're still paying for it later on. So um, given those things, I mean, I think that the auxiliary gem for many of the reasons people have already stated um, is something that we should pursue. Um, the lack of that would be, I think, a detriment to the program and to the community. The planetarium, um, I think, is in the nice to have category, not the educationally required category. I mean, in terms of our strategic plan, I don't see, I mean, I understand what Sarah talked about in terms of community input and engagement, but I don't see in terms of the necessity of a planetarium for a middle school program. The fact that we have had one before doesn't sway me because it's not I mean, I know people don't like to lose things, but if we did not have a planetarium right now and we were asking to add one for 120 million, I don't think we would have the community support. Maybe I'm wrong, and I don't want to speak for community, but I think it would be a different question. So um, given all those things, I think one of the things that you know we can consider uh, is a portable planetarium. I've seen some of these things. Now, maybe they're only good for elementary or middle school and not really for um, high school. But uh, in terms of the use of a planetarium, I do understand it is immersive and engaging, but it's not necessarily active participation. The active part is what you do in it and the curriculum and the lessons that you design, which you can design in a classroom or in a planetarium. So I'm going to be a no on the planetarium. With regard to the turf, um, this one's hard for me also. Uh, I think that the fact that we have community partners and um, contributions, and potentially a contribution from the township, but even without that, uh, as a commitment, um, I do think athletics are an important part of not just education but activity for our kids and our community and that we really need to provide fields. And the turf, especially because Sandy Run is a less than ideal uh, location, we didn't have any good alternates, and some of the fields could be at the play for various periods of time, I am going to be a yes on the turf field. Yeah, well, yeah, this is very interesting. Um, I can say honestly that I'm probably most uh, in alignment with how uh, Sarah is feeling. I've been a uh, promoter or a in favor of the planetarium for many years. I'd like to see it continued if at all possible. I think it is a valuable um, asset for our community. Um, so I would be yes for the planetarium. I'm um, yes for the auxiliary gym as well. I think that's very important. I'm torn about the, the turf and I'd like to get more information. I'm going to say no to the turf for now, but I could easily change my mind All right. 
I'll let you go last, Art. As board president, I'll go next. Um, Robert's not here. Um, when we started down this, this road, we had said um, that we made the Ox Gym an alternate because we were scared about bids. Um, the bids actually came back pretty good. Um, and I think there's a lot of documented need for that. There will always be a need for physical education in gyms. Um, and uh, so I'm a yes for the gym. Um, I'm also a yes for the planetarium. We did say sort of the same thing. We said we'd find out how much it's going to cost and then have a conversation uh, with the board and in front of the community about it. We're having that conversation now. Um, but to me, a planetarium serves many, many purposes in addition to teaching astronomy. It is, um, it is a magical place. When you walk into a planetarium, it is different. You cross through that door, and it's not like walking into another classroom. Something special happens here. And if that makes some people start to think bigger about our place in the universe, that's, that's so powerful and so important. Um, so to me, that's really important. It's also really important to me that I think this is a community that uh, is defined by its public schools. It is the identity of Upper Dublin. It is why so many people moved to Upper Dublin. Upper Dublin is about its schools. We don't have a thriving downtown. We don't have a huge mall. We don't have any of that stuff. We have schools. Um, and this is also a community that we hear over and over again as members of the board that likes to feel special. And as Sarah said, things like the Planetarium and Robbins Park are special. And uh, so I think it is as part of just maintaining and continuing to deliver the product that the community expects, uh, I think it's important that we maintain the Planetarium. So I'm a yes on the Planetarium. Uh, the turf is a much tougher one for me. Um, it seems to me either way we're providing a field, it's a question of the nature of the field that we're providing. It would be a very different question if it were, are we going to have a field or not. Um, but either way, we're providing a field and an opportunity to save, you know, if you, if you go all the way through $765,000, um, is a lot of money for me, not a lot of gain. You know, Stan said he spent a lot of time in the, in the gyms and, and uh, not in the planetarium. For me, it's the other way. I, like, I, I spent no time in the gyms at all. It's just the nature of who we are, right? I'm a geek. <laughs> uh, I don't spend time in gyms or on fields. My kids don't spend time on gyms or on fields, but, you know, to me, the planetarium is special. It's still not, but it's not about me. This is a decision for the whole community um, for 50 years. Um, I think saving the money and being able to spend it on other things is, is worthwhile. I do greatly appreciate uh, the commitments from UDJA and the Open Soccer Club, um, partnering with them throughout everything we've done uh, for years is, is part of what makes Open Open special. I hope we can uh, continue that relationship. Um, but to me, I don't think the difference between a grass field and a turf field is worth $765,000. So I'm a no for the, for the turf. I think uh, I strongly support your auxiliary gym. I think uh, the entire board has, has moved it forward. Uh, I just would echo all the comments in terms of what uh, the, the, the advantages of the auxiliary gym. Uh, the turf, we move on to turf. Uh, when, the, when the original bid went out for turf, uh, we estimated the turf would cost approximately $1.4 million. That was the turf. Uh, we were very pleased to get very favorable uh, bids back. 465 for the turf, 300 for the uh, retaining wall. Um, there's a possibility of getting 300 thousand dollars from our community groups and our township, which would then result in a turf costing us $465,000. We will never, ever be able to do a turf for $465,000. I'm sorry for me, I know some of you were torn, but for me it's a no-brainer. 
to do the turf. Uh, planetarium, um, very difficult decision. Uh, I know the advantages of the planetarium. Sarah, I appreciate your comments. Mark, I appreciate your comments. Um, I would also do the planetarium, and, and, and I support all three of the uh, items tonight, the auxiliary gym, planetarium, and the turf. All right, so that's everybody. If I add that up, the ox gym was eight nothing. Um, so that's a go. The planetarium was four four. four. That's unfortunate. Uh, and, the, and the turf, because we have uh, a question mark and a half, I'm going to call you a half a question mark. Um, uh, looks like uh, uh, more than, well, it's a three yeses, three and a half noes, and a question mark. Um, I have four so yeses. Like, four yeses. Four yeses? Four yeses. Did I miss yeah. one, two, three? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, four yeses. Um, but with hopefully more information to come on Monday night. Um, so we really, we, we can't, we have to lock the doors and not leave the room um, <laughs> until we give the administration and our team some direction on the planetarium. Um, having heard everyone's arguments, and I suppose the turf, um, having heard anyone's, everyone's arguments, does anyone not have anything else to add to teach you? Yeah, I wanted to add since I was going first. I yeah. feel like I should clarify something here. Uh, <laughs> one of the reasons I'm not in favor of the planetarium is that it is a place where you have to go to, you have to book it. Um, and while there is a lot of work gone into um, that part of the development of the curriculum, I do think there is a lot more to science than just things related to the planetarium. Um, we have invested a lot of money into technology. I think we need to use that. Um, you can use our technology if a teacher decides to look at the moon or at some uh, something else. They can do it right there and then. They do not have to wait two weeks, three weeks until they can go to the planetarium. There's also a planetarium 30 minutes down the street that if we really, really feel that that's essential, um, there are opportunities to explore that and to get that funded at a rate that I believe is a lot more, um, a lot, a lot more uh, favorable to us. And I really would like to spend that type, type of money on teacher development and science development in the larger sense. Anyone else have more to add? Sure. Oh, sorry. Um, so I think the planetarium has been such a big part of Upper Dublin for a long period of time that it's become part of our culture. And I think that taking the planetarium away would be a culture shift. It would be a change. Um, and what I love about the planetarium is that it's utilized by all of our kids, right? It doesn't matter if they go to Thomas Fitzwater, Fort Washington, Maple Glen, Sandy Run, uh, Jarrett Town. They're at there, and it's a place for people, for the kids, especially the elementary um, kids, to see the middle school, at least maybe for the first time and get some feeling for it over and over again, starting in kindergarten. And so when they go to the middle school and they're in sixth grade, they've been to the middle school before. They've, um, there's a sense of familiarity there. So again, for me, to, to make this change so that we don't have a planetarium is, is a really big change for Upper Dublin. And it's one that, um, you know, I don't think we should take lightly. I think the fact that we don't have all our full board here tonight to make this decision, I would say that this should be made, put forward for Monday's agenda so that we can further discuss it then. I, I, I don't necessarily want to speak to the planetarium, but to a mindset in general of the board. Um, since I've been on the board, I've seen us and of course, we're going to grapple with this issue, I, uh, as we should, with what we're investing, what we're spending, versus how much revenue we're taking in. And what then we have to do in terms of raising taxes. So we have a community that has spoken out time and again around the tax increases. And additionally, we have a situation now where we want to add or maintain a lot of things in the in the building. I guess for me, 
I'm curious to hear what the community feedback is. I'd be willing to move forward the planetarium to Monday, given the opportunity to hear from, because here's the reality. If the community says, we're willing on some level to take the tax increase and understand that, I mean, I don't know that we're ever going to get to that point, though. You know, I think it's just this bipolarity that we have to resolve amongst ourselves. And we're going to have to be potentially comfortable next year then raising taxes more than we want to in order to pay for everything that we want. I just, I'm just trying to resolve in my own mind how we get to that happy place. And, and to me, between that and the unforeseen costs that just keep happening in any construction project, but have happened repeatedly with this project so far, I, I'm just fearful about taking all of these alternates um, and, and not having a backup plan. Anyone else? My feeling is that um, you know it, it, it's clear we're not going to be able to please all of the people, um, no matter what we end up deciding here. And I'm not sure that buying additional time to Monday makes a meaningful difference. Um, it reminds me of you know going out to dinner and you're staring at the menu and the waiter says, "Do you want more time?" Well, it's not. I read the whole menu. No, no, no. It's not I, I meant to clarify <laughs> if. Yeah. If we have a full board compliment, then everyone can weigh in. So if we take this off the table, then not everyone can weigh. Not everyone can weigh in. Does that make sense? I, I'm well, not. Yeah. We can't actually legally bind ourselves to having it anyway. Way. But um, you know, whatever we say tonight, this is guidance for the for the team. It's not I a binding decision. Right, right, right. It can't be. Um, but um, yeah, we would have. We expect to have all nine of us there on Monday, and maybe that would help. But I don't think, you know, even if we say we want to hear from the community and we get lots of calls and lots of email and standing room only in the room on Monday, that's still going to be a tiny portion of the community. We're not going to hear um, from the entire community. Uh, it's our job as representatives of the community to to represent, to, to, to make that decision on behalf of the community. So certainly input is always valuable, um, but let's not pretend we're going to get all of it. Well, I agree to that. I don't think people in our community realize the planetarium is on the chopping block right now because of the assurances that we have given the community in the past. And therefore, I don't think it's fair to our community to make this decision without the planetarium, without informing them that this is something really serious and we're going to be making this decision for the next generation of Upper Dublin students. Uh, I do think that as board members, we have to listen to what the community wants. But I think it's really hard to get the input that is informed, I mean, if you ask, do you want the planetarium, that's an easy thing to say. Okay, yes, I would like a planetarium. It's a plus. However, I think in terms of the board making a decision, it has to be weighing various factors. You know, weighing how much the whole project costs, what is the incremental value of that versus using the money for something else. Uh, I don't feel like I ever made a commitment to either build a planetarium or not build a planetarium. And I think a lot of people who, and I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, I think a lot of people make their decision based on either nostalgia or what was it like when I went to school or various things without considering how technology changes, how things like what is our focus now? So when the Sandy River was built, the focus was on the space program. A lot of things now have to do with AI and robotics and other things that are science and STEM related that are just as important or more important. And in many cases, you know, if you were building a new school from scratch now, I think about what would I like in that? And the things to me that are really important that we do have in this design are collaboration spaces, maker spaces, computer lab, but the computer lab is not like you have to go to the computer lab because our students have computers, but in terms of 
the construction and maker space and projects that we have. And it is the curriculum that we deliver as opposed, and I do see that, you know, planetariums do have an immersive and engaging aspect to them. But when you weigh everything against all the things that we have to consider, that's not where I would put my dollars. So, so far I hear basically everybody reiterating the position they had before. Um, let me ask this question of our team. Yeah. Preparing both versions and having five, having nine people on Monday. At this point, I think we just move everything to Monday night. I don't think we're, I mean, we're just going to beat a dead horse. Yeah. Um, I have to say I'm a little shocked. And I'm a little shocked because I had conversations over the last couple of days with individual board members. And I feel as your superintendent that I can't trust some of the information that I've gotten over the last couple of days. And that hurts because I have put my all into this district over the last year. And I want what's best for this district. So I think we should put it through and let the votes have it on Monday night. I'm certainly sorry to hear you feel that way. Um, I would hope if anyone has changed their mind over the last few days, it's because of thoughtful consideration and persuasion by other people with other perspectives. I mean, we, we um, certainly I pride myself on being open-minded enough to listen to a good argument. I hope all of us are. Um, so when you say put it all forward to Monday night, Sure, so I think what we should do is put, um, advance everything, right? So all of the contracts for um, each of the primes and also just be ready to have the conversation and a final vote on the alternates um, and whether we're going to accept or reject those alternates. And Arif came over and talked to Andy and I, we can be ready on the fly um, well, not on the fly, but after that meeting to have all the correct documentation. Okay, so you're saying we don't need to lock the door and make sure we resolve no. this before? No, 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 <laughs> no. And in fact, I think I think what we can do, what's probably prudent on Monday night um, in the presentation section of the um, of the agenda is to review where we were tonight, very briefly. Um, and just have that one part of, or if we could just have that one part of the presentation where we um, see the three big alternates that we're talking about. Um, and, I, and I also think, uh, you know, to Sarah's point, if we can get more of a definitive um, answer or a clearer answer from the, the township, um, I think that would, that would maybe make some people feel, feel, uh, feel better. And Mr. Sirota, I believe me, I, I am as open-minded as they can be. So I'm not trying to chide anyone. It's just when I when I spend probably 15 hours over the last couple of days, and I've been gathering information, and I'm told one thing going into a meeting, and then something else changes, it just creates a situation that's difficult. Yeah, I completely get that. That's difficult. Uh, as a reminder for for the whole community. Uh, the nature of school boards is that we can't deliberate um, except in public. So we have never had this conversation um, with all of us before. A number of us have had one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations. I haven't had one-on-one -on -one conversations with everybody here, but um, I know a lot of, there have been a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. This is the first time we've ever done this in public. So I'm not terribly surprised that there are surprises. Um, I'm not even sure where the surprises were, um, but um, we are where we are, and uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll and take it into Monday night. It'll all come out of the wash on Monday night. So if, if is that okay if we, under the presentation section, we review these three? We'll review where we are. Dr. Kim will be here. We'll have a full complement of the board. Um, and at that point, we can do you know a, a mini presentation. Are we, are you able to be here yeah. Monday night? Yes, I will be now. And, uh, <laughs> And what else, can I just clarify, Dr. Yanni and Mr. Sirota, so if I understand this right, just so we're clear, 
I believe the auxiliary gym doesn't need to be one that we need to look at, right? So no, the auxiliary gym doesn't. So I think yeah. if we just keep it to Planetarium. the planetarium and the uh, turf field, to the turf fields, and I too, um, Which is both both versions of the right. turf, or all three, you know, we have we have two alternates to consider. To the turf field. Well, actually, so get, that's that would be important to just clarify. So yeah, if we could just because. The one alternate affects all four prime contracts, the, the planetarium we're talking about. So yeah. we're going to have an option ready on the fly to say if if the planetarium's a no-go, then the awards of these amounts for the different primes. Okay, so that's, you can do that. I just want to understand with the turf field. If the turf field is in, obviously we're adding, It's the good news it's only under one prime, okay? Yeah. So we would be adding the 465. But if we're not doing that, are we then also, do you also want to have the option to, you know, because we already have the 300 out, right? All right, I'm going to, uh, I'm just trying to just do it quickly on the fly. We're going to see where we land, because we really only talked about yes or no for that option, and there are actually three. Right. I just want to try to look at this. So, um, so let's, that's where I was going next, so that we yeah. have it. Can we clear? Let's go down the table. We'll start at Jordan. We'll just go straight down. Okay. Um, of the three options we have, and if that's not clear to anybody, just ask. But of the three options we have for that field number one, what when you said no or yes, what did you mean? I said yes to both the whole thing. said maybe to everything um, no I know I mean the part of it is it, 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 it's yes to everything or um, no to everything so I would I would say not the middle ground because a part of my decision is being based on um, money from our partners and obviously we wouldn't be getting any money from our partners um, if we chose that middle ground I feel the same way as Sarah I think it depends on the outcome of um, so yes. Um, yeah, I mean, when I said no, I was thinking we would do the sloped field and the much nicer uh, retaining wall. Um, my feeling on the middle ground is that someday never comes for projects like that. So I don't, I'm not sure it's it's worth it's a worthwhile consideration. I, the entire project. Yeah, the entire project. I'd like to see slope and grass. So no. To one and yes to the other. Right? No. No, yes no. to the... No, it's no to everything. No. I say yes to the turf. Right, so the answer was there's only two of the three options that are, are viable, it's all or nothing. Yeah. Mr. Sorota, just before we close, I didn't get a chance to thank our community partners for coming forward. I think it's, I think it's really important that we foster really good relationships. And as uh, Mrs. Rothman pointed out in the, um, in the uh, strategic plan, we have goals specifically around engagement. And so, you know, one of the things we talk about wanting to foster good relationships and partnerships. And so um, I thank our community partners for um, their sentiments tonight. Is, is there any way to be able to get a commitment from the township? I mean, there's no township meetings, so I don't know what we're going to get by Monday that we don't already know now. Well, that's a question to, I mean, that's obviously factual, but let's find out what Dr. Yami can pull out of by Monday. I'll shake him down tomorrow at 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, that is all of the regular business items were on to our regular community input period. Same, same procedures apply. Jen Cousins, Fort Washington. Um, so I'll start with the turf field. 
I think that we need to think long term. I think as we continue to develop land and drainage <laughs> is only going to get worse probably in and around Upper Dublin. We really need to we need to invest in that turf field. I think we'll have regrets and once we decide not to do it, we're never going to be able to do it there. And there's not really like there's a lot of other identifiable space within the township where we could do it. So it's kind of an all or nothing, it feels like, for the entire township. Um, so I just would really like you to think long and hard about that. Um, just to remind everybody, there were about a thousand residents who signed a petition to save the planetarium, which is, you know, pretty much what we saw in regards to the gym, and you know, that weighed heavily in some people's decisions. So maybe reminding yourselves of that petition might help. Um, with the planetarium. I think that uh, when we talk about other science programs, I totally agree with artificial intelligence and everything, you know, when we talk about those kinds of things, but it's not like we're deciding between a planetarium and a robotics facility, where, right? And, you know, uh, since when is space kind of obsolete? We're going to be trying to colonize in Mars. What is that going to look like 10, 15 years? I mean, I think it could only be an asset for us long term. Um, because, you know, there still are active <laughs> space programs that are happening. And to me, it would be the equivalent of saying, well, then why even have a library? Because we can just download the books onto our Chromebooks and computers. So I think that there's something really special about allowing children to immerse themselves in something like a planetarium. All of our field trips, you know, we go to the aquariums. It's, you know, why? We could just look at that on a computer. I mean, I think we really have to think about the overall experience that we're providing for students um, and, and how we spend so much of our additional time trying to immerse our children in these kinds of things, like museums and aquariums and I think also planetariums. Um, and I'm not convinced that even if we cut the planetarium, then we won't have a tax increase next year. I think it's just kind of what we do. Um, so to say that we won't have a tax increase if we cut the planetarium. Like, I just think that that, I don't think we should be thinking of it that way. Uh, thank you. Oh, do I get her extra minute? Jenny Vitale and Amler. Um, so, <laughs> come on, Art. Uh, anyway, so everyone knows for sure that I'm an athletic supporter. I have been, I've been very vocal about it. And I am also a supporter of the planetarium. I'm a supporter for all three things. You know why? Especially the auxiliary gym and the planetarium, because when we discussed this three years ago, we were never not having them. We went over it and over it. I do find it interesting that the three newer people that weren't, as Amy said, weren't part of those discussions at the beginning. Um, I don't think, maybe people might have thought differently it about the whole project in and of itself if they were going to sit here three years later and have to pit whether we wanted an auxiliary gym or whether we wanted a planetarium because this was not even supposed to be part of the discussion at this point it was not supposed to be we talked about it many many times at all those meetings and uh, mark knows we did that a lot um science is very very important it's not going away females in science not going away um and i have to just say one thing about violet team I was actually, I watched that on video, I was unable to come to that meeting, but my son was on Violet Team. And we had two projects, and I had asked, actually, if he could be one of the people to speak, because he wasn't just going to be a guy who said, yes, this is the best thing that I've ever had in my educational experience. No, actually, he was not a big fan. Um, so it's different strokes for different folks. It was a brand new first thing. I think it was a good direction to start. But using that as, um, oh, we're doing that project-based learning and not as, a get, as putting, pitting it against the planetarium, it doesn't fly from it. Um, the planetarium, nowadays, there's so much more technology involved. So if we don't actually put the space in there for the planetarium, then we can never add potential of this technology that's out there. Um, so I don't know if that's something that can be broken down in pieces. I don't know if we've looked into um, donations, fundraisers. Um, I think there was stuff out there a couple years ago when we started talking about it, when we did that petition for over a thousand people that signed it. I also am curious about how many people on this board actually went to the planetarium, have seen it, have seen the curriculum, have seen the kids in there, and also asked the director any questions about it or any future 
potentials, like how they can deal with NASA now on it. And I don't know all the things, but I know what we have in the building now in the planetarium. That it's new and improved. There's more stuff we can get in there now. Um, the Fellows Planetarium down in Philadelphia. Yes, it is in theory 30 minutes away, but I can guarantee you on school buses it doesn't just take 30 minutes to get there. And I also I know that because the last two years the PTA helped fund the buses to send the kids to the Franklin Institute. It was three thousand dollars for the buses for that day. So just popping into the planetarium down at the Fells Planetarium down at the Franklin Institute isn't just a pop in like maybe we could do jump on the R5 or something. As taking 300 kids in a grade down there, it's very expensive, and the PTO has been helping that facilitate that. So that's not a, a, a good thing. I don't think in comparison. I don't think it's the same right thing. Um, and again, the planetarium was supposed to be part of the 70 million dollars in the beginning. And also, I just want to refer to the fact that I, this is not just emotional. Yes, I did happen to attend the planetarium back when I went to Sandy Run, but that is not why I want the planetarium. And I think it's marginalizing some of the people's decisions to keep that by mentioning or thinking that it's just emotional and not actual factual. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to speak for a moment. Maybe I can help with Sarah. And you might just say your name out. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Michael Klein, Michael Klein. Um, there's a huge difference between turf fields and grass fields. Um, basically, it can rain all day, all night. Um, and what will happen is the next day the school game will get canceled mm -hmm. on a grass field. But on a turf field, short of there being lightning and thunder, yep. you're going to be able to play on that field. The water goes right through, there's drainage under the field, it goes right through, and basically it never closes. You know, every day we get notifications on fields, and anytime it rains, I get an email, all grass fields closed, all turf fields are open. So it's something, like I said, it never closes, and that's huge especially when we have such short seasons for the schools and for the community uh, seasons. I mean, school season lasts 10 weeks, and if you lose three or four games, I mean, that's, that's a huge deal. Um, as far as lights, there really is not a big difference between grass and um, turf fields. You know, if you have lights, of course you can play more hours, and that's kind of the same on both. Uh, would we love to have lights? Of course, but if it's not possible, it's not possible. We have plenty of fields. I'd love to have lights on baseball fields, so, and that doesn't happen, but you know, you do the best you can. Um, as far as the cost goes, um, all our tur turf fields are fee-based. So every time one of the community teams gets on a field, they pay a fee. And that fee goes into a pot that uh, goes to replace the turf when it wears out, usually within 10 years. And that's the way Cardinal Stadium works, that's the way Spark has worked. And that's where the money comes to uh, replace the field. So, you know, even with the investment we're making, we would still be paying a fee for using the field every hour that we're on there. Hopefully, that's at least some help with uh, your decision. Good evening, Ted Fricker, Dresher, uh, Upper Dublin resident, 44 years, class of 1993. Um, I went back to fifth grade. I had Mrs. Pierce as my teacher. Mr. Pierce was in the planetarium. We, I never, I won't forget how excited we got to go when you got to go to the planetarium as a kid. I know I have two kids in the district, not very engaged when I say, how was your day at school? And when I say, unless I hear they went to the planetarium. They glow, my two daughters, when they talk about going to the planetarium. I, I think it's something very unique and very special at Upper Dublin. I hope that, uh, I, I'm disappointed to hear some of our board members don't get to go there besides once. Um, they have open events. And they're, they're great events. And I think it's disappointing to think that there's not more thought about what the, the go to the, go, go survey the elementary kids about it and see what they think about it. I mean, I think you'd be surprised to hear how excited they get about those trips. Um, the disappointing part to me is the initial bid we had talked about was $70 million for the school and it included the planetarium. Now we're at 75 and we're cutting the planetarium. I'm sure that that extra $5 million was not due to the planetarium. There were other things involved in that. So just thoughts about it. Um, the, the turf field, I think that is a township issue more so than a district issue. I think the township will get much more use out of that field than the district will. I think the township should have weighed in on this already, and if we didn't ask them to, then shame on us too. The township could have reduced fees to help accommodate that. I completely agree what the township is doing to the school district right now is ridiculous. With these fees that they're charging for the school that's going to improve the district, 
uh, as they build a $21 million library, which is another dinosaur. Uh, but that's a different story for a different day. But I just think that I appreciate the community members who help contribute towards it, but I think the township really needs to step up here, and, and if they want the turf field, really be the driving force for that. Um, I was disappointed to hear about the contingency from the high school allowing for the terrazzo floors because we still don't have the bus depot. That was cut out of the high school. We're still paying for that every year. So I don't really think that's a fair assessment of the terrazzo. I thought that was interesting. And I'm going to keep asking until I get an answer. The referendum for the high school, the money, when that referendum is over, what happens to the money? I keep being told that the lawyers are looking into it. I'd like to know the answer to that. Thank you. Don Price, Maple Glen. Um, my son texted me during the meeting, what's going on with the gyms? And he did mention about the special ed kids. He goes, where are they going to go? What are they going to do? They don't come into our classes. We'd like to engage with them. So I'm sure he'll be happy when I go home because I won't text him now. I'll let him wait a little bit. Um, so thank you in advance. In regards to the turf gyms, I remember when I worked at Wissahickon School District, um, they were deciding on whether or not to turf their football field. And it was a big huge decision. It was a groundbreaking decision because they were, supposed. I think at that time they were the first um, high school in Montgomery County to go to turf. Um, they have not gone back to grass. They've continued with turf. And the turf has gotten better and better over the years in regards to injuries, um, in regards to a lot of things, drainage, maintenance, and everything else. Um, in regards to the uh, planetarium, since I'm here, and I'm a, I'm a citizen or a taxpayer. Um, I think what you need to think about is, someone mentioned culture change. There are a lot of culture changes in education. We're not teaching like we used to 10 years ago. We're not teaching like we did 20 years ago, 30 years, 40 years ago. It has changed. And in regards to change, we have to be open to new change. Technology was one of them. I remember when the first Chromebook came out, the first laptop, it was like, what are we going to do with these? Oh my gosh, we have to have in-services. We have to have professional development. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, change is good. Um, culture doesn't always necessarily mean that change can't happen. Uh, I think regarding the planetarium also, I talked with my kids. They said when they were in elementary school, we were so excited to go to the planetarium because we were going where the big kids were. And we're going to see the big kids in the big school and go see like plants and everything else. When they got to middle school, their perception of the planetarium changed. And the perception was, they have really comfy seats, we're really tired, we get to look up, and sometimes we can take a nap. They're middle school kids, so you have to think about that. Um, I think in regards to the planetarium, you gotta look at investment. Um, is the investment worth the payoff? And I think you can apply that to both decisions, whether it comes from the planetarium or the turfs. Um, is the investment worth the payoff? In regards to the planetarium, is the investment worth the experiential experience that's only a fraction of the science curriculum? It's unfortunate, but it's true. So um, I think you, you, you have a decision to make. I'm, I'm a little disappointed it wasn't made tonight because that was the purpose of tonight's meeting was to get input on some of these decisions. Um, one other question I, ask, uh, I do have to ask is, has anybody on the board reached out to the township in regards to the fields and the turf? We really need to be proactive as a board in regarding to do that because we do work together. Whether we're township or whether we're school district, we're still in the same community. Thank you. I need a Bristol for Washington. Um, I'm just going to focus on the planetarium. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of keeping it. Um, I do think. Um, I really admire Sarah for saying that she, from the beginning, basically gave her word that we would not lose that, and she's trying to hold to that. And I think she wasn't the only one. There were other board members who basically said, we won't have less than we have now. And for me, it's not about nostalgia. It is actually about science. And it's not because I expect all these little kids to become astronauts. It's because I have, really do have a view. First of all, I really like the curriculum, um, Ginny posted it a while back on Facebook, but I also kind of knew from when my kids went through. 
it's not just science that you're hitting in the planetarium um, curriculum. You're hitting art, or the teacher is hitting art. She's hitting English. It's probably some other things. But it is certainly more science-based than others. And I do think, um, you know, this is an unusual moment because I don't agree with Sarah all the time. But I agree with just about everything she said tonight on the planetarium. It is exciting for the kids, the, the elementary. First of all, the curriculum is all the way through, elementary all the way up through high school. And it is very exciting for the little kids to get to go see their own middle school. And that's great. And I don't know, the way I drive, the Franklin Institute is at least 45 minutes away, sometimes an hour the way I drive. So on a bus, it's not a half hour away. It's just not that easy to get there. I view the planetarium similar to Robbins Park. These are areas where kids really get to do hands-on. Well, I get it that some people are saying it's pa it's passive. I don't I don't. If you're going to say that's passive, then anything in a classroom can be passive. If you've got a good teacher and a good curriculum, I don't think you're looking at. I wouldn't be looking at this as passive. So I think the community has tried to say they do value it. As Jen mentioned, there's a petition with over a thousand names true that you haven't reached 20,000 in the community, so there are many that don't know it's on the chopping block. We'll see what happens if, if more reach out to board members um, this week. I do think that those two things, Robbins Park and the Planetarium, do make Upper Dublin special. It, it's an, sort of an addition to our science curriculum, and I think it is nice to have, not just I don't think it's about nostalgia or nice to have. I view it as a, a good science program, a part of a good science program. I'm not saying it's the only only piece of it by any means. So whatever, I think it would be, it's hard to lose something. You're building a new school and it's hard to say that that new school will have less than what we're used to. And I don't have time to get into specifics here, but there's many, many places to save in a budget. A budget is nothing but a list of priorities. So I don't view it as, oh my God, if we have the planetarium, Brister better shut up about those tax increases. Uh-uh, Brister won't be shutting up about the tax increases because there are many, many places that I could identify, that many on the board could identify, that Dr. Yanni could identify where you can have some savings. Thanks. Hi, I'm Caitlin Johnson. I live in Fort Washington. I just stopped by tonight because I heard that there was a possibility that we were going to have a second gym in Sandy Run, and I just couldn't believe that. I was born here, I raised here, I'm hoping to have my fourth child here, um, and I just thought, oh my goodness, how can you survive Sandy Run without a second like, gym? And then when I sat here and I learned the Panatania was on like the shopping rack. I was so upset. Like, I had no idea that that was going to happen. There was a possibility it was going to happen. Like, you just hear in the community, you think they're going to keep it. And then I realized, like, the reason I love being here, the reason I, like, have my family here is because I see Alberta as being special, as being unique, as being such a wonderful place that strives for excellence. And I, I feel like something's going to be lost. So if it's not there, yes, life will go on. There will have other science. They will, there's great teachers, there's great classrooms, like, it will be fine, our kids will be fine, our teachers will be fine, but it's just that little piece of your history and the history that you hope to pass on, you hope to have that community, to have that culture, to have that experience that everybody else in Upper Dublin has together, that will just be missing, and I don't know what it's going to be replaced with, I hope that robotics will be the answer and that we can all graduate and we'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that really cool like, robotics, like, class we had, like it's great. Um, and that might happen for the future with all the different technology and all the iPads and all whatever's going on, sorry, I'm nervous. But I feel like something is just about our, our community will be lost. And I hope if it is lost, that this new school will bring something new and something exciting and something that my kids could leave Sandy Run feeling like, wow, we all had this great experience together over whatever it is. Whether we were the geeks or the athletes or everything in between. Um, I hope this building has become something wonderful, whether it's there or not, but it's definitely a sad hit for us that weren't aware. Anybody else? Just, just one. 
that was a great close, closing. I think uh, it will be a great, wonderful new building, no matter what decisions we end up making on that day. Let's remember that. Um, uh, let's see, are there any questions or comments anybody wants to make on any of that input? There are a few comments that I that I just like to make. Yeah. Um, I'll start with uh, the budget being a list of priori priorities. I wholeheartedly agree, and one of the reasons that we um, brought in the CFO that we uh, brought in as a result of interview process is because I'm confident um, that we will see budget reductions for next year. Budget reductions of, of things, you know, one of the things we, we did with our budget this year, we switched to a needs-based budget, and I would give us all, myself included, about a strong B plus with the way we built our budget this year. Next year, I'm gonna, we're gonna strive for, you know, that solid A, and that means really, you know, scrubbing the budget for, you know, things that are either redundancies or things that we're not taking full advantage of. So I think that's um, that's a point um, that we have to uh, that we have to stress. There was a question about what happens when the referendum uh, when the referendum uh, debt fall off happens um, tonight. Um, I'm committing that we will most likely have a budget uh, town hall uh, either in September or early October, um, so that we can talk about different bu budget pressures. Um, we will make sure that we talk about that topic extensively because I think the community um, has to have some have some answers around that. Um, you know, one of the things, no matter what, whatever the cost of this project is, as your superintendent, I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that um, you know our kids' experiences are really strong and really good. There was also a comment made about the ultraviolet team, and I think. Um, just, just for uh, clarity, nobody at this table had a hand in selecting which kids uh, were part of that. And you know, whether we're talking about personalized learning or project-based learning or whatever the new buzzword of the day is, one of the things that we always have to remember is there's a set of good experiences that we want our kids to have, and we have to make sure that those happen across the, uh, you know, across the curriculum. Thank you. Amy? I just want to clarify my comment about the tax increases. I wasn't suggesting that we were not going to have a tax increase next year because of any cuts potentially to this budget. Um, what I was suggesting is that it may, be, may have to be slightly higher. I, I don't know. Um, this was an extremely difficult decision-making process because there's no perfect answer. Um, but as Steve just said, uh, ensuring those good educational experiences across whatever team any student is on it is the main goal. So I apologize if I was not clear. Um, since this is a finance meeting um, as well, I just on um, tax increases. I just want to I want to say I don't think it's realistic for anyone to be expecting there ever to be no tax increase. The only reason there's ever no tax increase is because there was excess money from something or a political stunt. Expenses go up every year because of inflation, because of pensions, because of health care. Um, salaries go up every year because of inflation. Like The Fed targets 2% increase every year. That's, that's the long-term expected average, and our expenses are going to therefore go up in long-term average by at least two percent every year, the way pensions or healthcare are going, it's you know more than that. So taxes are going to continue to go up. That's my take on it. Uh, you know, we try to minimize that to the extent possible, but I think expecting a zero is just setting yourself up for disappointment. Um, and I need a nobody was expecting you to stop. Talking about that stuff. <laughs> did, I, did I ever say I expected a zero? <laughs> no, you didn't. But I'm just, I, I'm just make, I hear it out there. You just there, finished the planetarium with the tax. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other comments or? I have one. Uh, go on. Uh, I think it's more likely that some of the consequences. I mean, maybe we can do enough other reductions in the budget in other places, and maybe there will be enough new revenue from some of the new developments in the township and we do have to credit the township for doing a lot of work to improve 
the uh, office park, which helps all of us with uh, increased assessment and increased revenue. But more likely, I think the consequence of maybe if we, you know, spend more money here, it will be more like deferring some of the projects like what the other elementary schools need. And that, that's a more likely now, maybe, I don't know, in terms of consequences. I failed to address one uh, point, um, and I'm going to bring up the township here. And every time I bring up the township, I get in trouble for a couple months. So I, I just want to be really clear that the, the statement that I'm about to make is in no way speaking ill against uh, the township. Um, we have liaison meetings with the township, and their primary budgetary focus right now is 520 Virginia for the library slash community building. So when we talk about doing any type of joint projects, those conversations are always out on the peripheral um, instead of um, sort of at, you know sort of at this you know the center. So um, we have in several capacities and in several different types of meetings um, discussed some joint projects. Um, but I, I'm sure that over the next couple of days. Uh, there are enough people here and enough people in the township that we can collaborate together and see what we can come, you know, what we can come up with. Because just like the community will get use out of 520 when it's done, the community would also get use uh, from, you know, an artificial turf field. Um, and with the precedent being set that there's been collaboration before, hopefully we can make sure that that uh, carries on into the future. Stan. <laughs> Uh, yes, I was um, in talk with, with uh, township officials. Um, I spoke with the director of Parks and Recreation. We talked about uh, perhaps naming rights, um, at the township contributing funds for building it, uh, replacement costs for uh, the turf field, and the percentage of um, the community using the school district's uh, new turf field at Sandy. So I, I had been talking with the township officials. All right, other comments or questions? Okay, so our next uh, operations and finance meeting is on Thursday, August 22nd, starting at 6 p.m. here in the Cardinal Room. Uh, the operations committee will be first with the finance committee immediately following. And with that, we are adjourned.